Hi, hi, hi. How's it going, everyone? Hope you're rocking and and rolling on this fine Saturday Eve this weekend. Hope you're killing it. Uh, today, if you missed it, on my YouTube channel, we uploaded the uh, Vaporeon episode of Pokemon Infinite Fusion. And so I thought, what better day to finish our adventure, at least the Elite Four section of it, with uh, a little bit of a little bit of Pokemon Infinite Fusion, huh? How about that? Pretty neat, huh? Take a look. There's the Pokemon. Oh God, <laughs> that's a that's a hell of a one to open up on. Um, yeah, it's gonna be great. We're playing with the uh, Professor Oak, of course, um, and seeing how far we can get it uh, with you know the Elite Four coming up. Seeing if we can win. Uh, after that, so tomorrow's stream is the big one. We're going to be continuing Cursed Halo. Um, however, I made a working Cortana, uh, model that I am excited for you guys to see. I mean, by model, I mean AI. Uh, we have a, uh, Cortana AI that with a, its own custom model that's got a, uh, transparent freaking hologram look to it. And uh, we're going to be playing through Cursed Halo with Cortana and Charborg will be joining us. So we're going to have a special guest, Charborg, and I co-oping through Cursed Halo uh, to see it with Cortana trying to advise us along the way. So it's going to be a hell of a time. That's going to be tomorrow, probably starting around this time, like around 5 PT. Um, and uh, yeah, so tonight we're doing Pokemon, tomorrow we're doing, we're doing Halo. A, a stacked schedule. Um, Dami de, de Lune, thank you for the 32 months. I witness you. Thank you. Um, yeah, 5 PST is the plan. You know, I'll double check with Charbork, but that should be the plan. Plan to go back to Willy's Pokemon, Pixelmon server anytime soon? Yeah, I'd like to. I, the, the problem is, I kind of feel like everyone's already done with that because everyone's already doing the Elite Four and stuff, and I like just started. So I didn't, you know, it's a little bit hard. I think the best time for Minecraft server is right when it gets started. You know, everyone jumps in. Um, so I'll see about playing more. But I know we're going to pl play our own at some point later. Um, maybe even this summer. I love that Jinx one. That's a good one. Um, so we'll see if we can do more after that. Yeah. Uh, how is Kraken? Wow, no one ever asked that. You know he's getting by. He's had a cup. He's had a tough couple of weeks, um, but you know, he's he's on the up and up, and he's he's doing his best to get better. So Molly is what is that? Molly is lame. Oh, that's mean. Thank you for the sub, though. Welcome. Why is Kraken? I don't know. I don't know. Don't have doesn't have a really good reason, but he is. Where is Kraken? Right here. Hey. How does Kraken? Actually, you know what? This is a good question for our, our special guest here today. Professor Oak, what is Kraken? Uh-oh. Kraken? I'm not sure what you're referring to. If you mean the legendary sea monster, then I can't help you there. However, if you're asking about a possible Pokemon fusion involving a Krabby and a Shelder, then that's a different story. Perhaps we could call it Shellberry, and its signature move could be Shell Smash Strike. It would pack quite a punch. Shellberry, okay. Um, not what I asked, but that's good to know. Um, that uh, That's what he thinks of, of my name, you know? I love Oak's OC so much. Yeah, he's he's a creative he's a creative little guy. He's a creative professor. Also, um, I edited his AI just a tiny bit. Okay, just a teensy bit. I managed to make I I made him uh, passive aggressive again. So I just I input a little bit more spice. All right, not a full lobotomy. I just I just inserted passive aggressive back in because I thought he was almost too nice last time. So, 
Uh, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of something for everyone. The Warwolf, thank you for the gifted sub. I appreciate that. All right, let's hop in now. Today, the plan is to beat the Elite Four, so we're gonna try to do that. I know there's like a post game in this game, but um, who knows? It's hard to know how far we get in games nowadays, so I figured at least we get beat the Elite Four, and if we go farther than that, then great. But there's plenty of other AI co-op streams that we want to do, so maybe we uh, we try something new next time. Maybe some sarcasm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I could I could try to. We'll see. I, I think the way the AI is written right now is probably pretty good, but in the future, I think a sarcastic AI sounds hilarious because there's no way they're going to get it right. I had a suggestion, can we make an Omnisci AI and play a 40k game? Uh, yeah? I feel like there's not many games that really take the Omnisci to its full potential, though. Football Workshop? Oh, that's no, okay. Sport ball. Oh. Skaven AI? I could probably make a pretty good Skaven AI, AI and, play, and Vermintide. That would be fun, right? You guys have like a, uh, a gray seer that speaks for you? I'm trying to think how I would word that. Like, you... Whenever you say an adjective, you will repeat that adjective immediately afterwards. Or no, you will repeat a, like a, what, a similar sounding word for that adjective? A synonym? Yeah. Yeah. Repeat a synonym. Yeah, that, I think that's how you're supposed to do it. Wait, thief. Where the hell am I? Am I? I think I'm still in the, the other region. Oh goodness. Oh, I forgot we made this abomination. This thing does not mess around. Blood Vendor, thank you for the 25 months, man. Um. Age of Fire. Oh, that's sick. Electric Ghost or Electric Steel? I guess it was Steel. Dead. Yo! My angry little Chansey Ball. Mine. <laughs> Ursaisi. No touch egg. It's got massive special attack for some reason. I mean, this is weird. Should I try reversing it? You see what it's like reversed? Oh boy. The reverse can't possibly be better. Oh no. <laughs> Bliss ring. The stats are better. That's good special defense, really good HP, good attack. That's a magical girl. It is it is a magical girl, isn't it? Chat down. Be good, chat. Let's see what let's see what uh Professor Oak thinks. 
Hey, Professor Oak. What do you think about the potential fusion between Blissey and Ursaring? Would this be a powerful Pokemon? Or perhaps... Legendary. I think you'll like it. Oh dear, you must be new to the world of Pokemon fusions. Blissey and Ursaring? That's quite an interesting combination. Nevertheless, what? I suppose it could be useful for battles that require both strong physical attacks and healing abilities. As for its potential power, it would likely be no match for legendary Pokemon. Oh. But if properly trained and utilized, it could be a formidable addition to any trainer's team. As for a name, I'll call it Bear Hugger. Its <laughs> signature move could be Caring Crush, a powerful physical attack that also heals itself. Caring Crush, that's a great name. Good idea, Professor Oak. Johnny Bravo. Man, I, I can't believe our journey is coming to an end soon. All right, so if we're gonna bring Bear Hugger or Care Bear, that's also a great one. I don't, I don't know if I'm loving Haunchmime. Haunchmime's kind of freaking me out. Although I need him to, to fly, don't I? Um, and Lantivoir. Lantivoir is pretty good, I guess. Age of Wonders 4 stream? Yeah, I saw Age of Wonders uh, is coming out soon, right? I don't know. I don't know when we're going to stream that. Or if. Is Hauntsmime the crow from Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? He does remind me of that. Pesky bee. I love Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. It's one of my favorite things. Um, is there any game you're particularly excited to do an AI companion with? Uh, so tomorrow, Cursed Halo with AI companion Cortana. I'm very excited for. And then last night, Charborg and I were brainstorming a whole bunch of different games and shows that involve AI companions that uh, I am keeping close to the chest right now. But they're going to be... They're gonna be, they're gonna be good. I can say that confidently. Um, where do I go for Professor or the uh, Team Rocket thing? So this one of the cities, Saffron City. Zelda with AI Navi. And there's a lot you could do. That's true. Do you voice AI Cortana? AI Cortana? Not quite, because Windows actually has released Cortana's voice as an actual voice. <laughs> so we just use those lines, you know? Because Windows like already made an AI voice for Cortana, right? So it was uh, kind of a, a no-brainer. Styx, Master of Shadows with Styx AI. I don't know if I can do Styx again. I don't, I don't think we'll ever be able to top that stick stream from last time, you know? Actually, I have an idea. Because I don't really actually remember where I'm supposed to go right now. I'm going to go to where the last gym is. And I know it's going to be locked. Right? And then... I'll ask Oak where to go. And he'll, he'll know where to go. It's right here. Um, hey, Professor Oak, I just got seven gym badges, and before I can go to the Elite Four, I need to get my eighth gym badge from Viridian City, but it seems that the gym leader isn't home. Do you have any idea where I can find him? This is me asking a genuine question. I, I could either ask chat, or I can ask my helpful companion, Professor Oak, and he's going to tell me. He's going to oh, tell yes. me. That gym leader can be quite elusive. Have you tried visiting their old gym in Viridian City? I believe there may be a clue or two hidden inside, and while you're there, take some time to train and strengthen your Pokemon. 
you never know what challenges the Elite the 4th of May bring. Good luck, trainer. <laughs> elite the 4th of May? Huh? Elite the 4th of May be with you as well, Professor Oak. Um, uh, well, that's the problem, Professor Oak. There's a strange man out front that says that the gym leader hasn't been back and nobody knows where he is. I'm trying to remember where he might be, but I don't know if I've met him before or not. Do you know where the Viridian City gym leader is hiding? What the hell is Professor Oak AI? It's an AI that I built to act like Professor Oak and talk like him. Hmm. That does sound like an issue. However, I must correct you. The gym leader of Viridian City is not hiding. He is oh. simply busy with other matters. As to where he may be, I am not entirely sure. You may want to check around the region and see if anyone has seen him recently. As a trainer, it is important to be resourceful and adaptable. Use your skills and ingenuity to overcome this challenge. Good luck on your journey, young trainer. It's like I hear, like, wind in the background. Where is he? He really isn't helping at all. <laughs> or he just doesn't know, and he is refusing to admit it. So I think he's... Which city is he in? I go to Cinnabar? Oh. Right, because they were going to get uh, Moltres. I remember. Okay. Volcano. Oh, never mind. Did you do the Team Rocket dungeon in Sabrina City? Yeah, that's what I was trying to remember. Do you do that now? Or later? Drifture. Um. No. We'll say it's a bad omen when it appears. Whoa! A special event, Stantler. I don't think I have an item. Shit. Do I have any way of... I don't think I have any way of doing damage. <laughs> oh, no. Um... Well, what about you? Professor Oak, I just found a new Pokemon! It seems to be a deer with antlers. What am I looking at? Is it a weird Pokemon fusion? He's gonna be like, you fucking idiot. You dumbass, you absolute buffoon. <laughs> ah, my dear trainer, it seems like you have stumbled upon the majestic Pokemon known as Deerling. It's not a <laughs> oh. fusion, but rather a Pokemon that changes its appearance depending on the season. Keep exploring, and you might find its evolution, Sawsbuck, which also changes with the seasons. I mean, that's fair. No, I don't think this one's Deerling. It it has little balls at, on its antler, and it rhymes with the word antler. Do you know what it might be? Nice. 
apologies for the confusion. I believe you may have found a Stantler, a normal oh. type Pokemon from the Yado region. Stantler are known for their antlers, which they use to communicate telepathically with other Stantler. You cannot fuse Stantler with any other Pokemon to create a fusion, but you can try different Why? battle strategies with it depending on its moves and abilities. This is this one's immune to fusions, apparently. <laughs> Dakor, thank you for the prime sub. <laughs> Should I just do it and tell him? Yeah, what's he gonna say if I just do it? Professor Oak, why can't you fuse Stantler with any other Pokemon? Is it special in some way that makes it unfusable? <laughs> I want to hear his, his explanation for this. I could make a drippy Stantler. Ah, an excellent question, my dear trainer. The technology for fusing Pokemon is still relatively new and has its limitations. Certain Pokemon simply cannot be fused due to their unique biology or abilities. Stantler's antlers, for example, are a crucial part of its biology and telepathic ability, and fusing it with another Pokemon could hinder these abilities or oh. possibly cause harm to the Stantler. Oh, it's shit. important to remember that not every Pokemon is meant to be fused, but that doesn't make them any less special or powerful on their own. What if I just did it? What if I just did it? Professor Oak, despite what you just said, I just fused Stantler and a Litwick. Litler. Well, my dear trainer, as a professor, I am wary of fusing Pokemon together without due consideration. However, since this fusion has already taken place, I shall provide you with your requested fusion name, Lantler. As for its signature oh. move, I would hypothesize that Lantler's telepathic prowess combined with Litwick's ghostly abilities may result in a unique move that could confuse opponents called Spectral Confusion. <laughs> Do be careful when experimenting with new fusions, and always make sure that both Pokemon involved are willing and consenting to such an endeavor. Big candle Pokemon. <laughs> Ooh. Do you want Intimidate or Flame Body? Hmm. I think Intimidate is good, right? Um. Willow Wisp. Flame burst. Mm. It seems like a cool one. How's the stats? Meh. Meh. Not the end of the world. Yeah, normal ghost is cool typing. Okay. Um, so do I have to go to the where the volcano is? I think so, right? Mount Ember. Okay. Where is that?
Excuse me. Mm. Seafoam Islands. Shark Missile, thank you for the three-year reset. Oh, I need to surf. Um. Okay. Yeah, Crapion's great. Crapion's like one of our our carries. I gotta get Rex some freaking moves, man. Rex has literally no moves. Hey there, Thick Blade Smith. Thank you for the yearling resub. Pretty slick there, stud. I don't know what that means. Marovile. Stream title is still Dead Island from yesterday. Nuh-uh. Try refreshing. Do swine. Oh, that's a chonker. Um, ow. This thing hurts. It is like a boon. My friend. Ow. He hurts! Ow! Catch? Can't. Oh, I just broke that sandcastle, I'm sorry. Who, who swims to a little sandbar out in the middle of the ocean and makes a sandcastle? I fetched. This is what? What is this? Sai fetched? Psyduck and far fetched. Incredible duck. I'm gonna heal. Uh oh. Youch. Vapor Dactyl. Oh, I think I know a specific professor who's going to love this one. Professor Oak, what do you imagine? The Pokemon fusion between Vaporeon and Aerodactyl would look like. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> any scalies in the chat? Uh, Vaporeon and Aerodactyl. Interesting choice. 
I would imagine their fusion to have sleek aquatic features with wings that allow for speedy aerial maneuvers. Its yeah. new name would be Aeropod, and its signature move would be called Aqua Swoop. A quick dive attack that deals damage and has a chance to lower the opposing Pokemon's defense. However, keep in mind that success with Pokemon fusions also depends on strategy and the skills of the trainer. Okay, I don't know what that means, but thank you for that, OC. Where does the pod come from? I don't know. I don't know what he meant by that. Koliakus, Nick, thank you for the 34 months. He doesn't think you can handle it. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I don't want fling. That was a joke. I'm curious if Haunchmime's any good. We've been training them, but I don't even know. The Aqua is stored in the pods. <laughs> Fantata! I like Fantata. Darkwing Duck? Oh my god, he is, you're right. Chandler. Yo, it's Chandler from fucking, uh... It's from Friends. Yeah, he looks different. That's a crazy design, I love it. He's dead, though. Ooh, Baton Pass. And it's a prankster. Ooh, are we perchance going to set up? Is this gonna be our setup Pokemon? And then we baton pass to our fucking, uh, our terrifying ape that will sweep everyone? Perchance. You can't just say perchance? I certainly can. Professor Oak, what perchance is your favorite Pokemon of the week? Squirtar. <laughs> he looks a little Squirtar. Ah, my dear trainer. My favorite Pokemon changes based on my mood and the weather outside. <laughs> this week, I'm particularly fond of the versatile Eevee and its myriad evolutionary possibilities. Just imagine the fusion potential with Eevee's adaptable genes. No kidding. I've heard that one before. We're just going in, in circles. Oh yeah? Can you theorize maybe a few different fusion ideas with Eevee and its different evolutions? Sand Turtle! That one looks sick! I love Sand Turtle. Oh, I'm setting up. Is he not? Oh, he didn't hear me. He didn't hear me for some reason. Um... <clears throat> Professor Oak, do you have any examples of some interesting fusions between Eevee and their other possible evolutions? Oh, where to begin? 
Let's see. How about a fusion of Eevee and Vaporeon? <laughs> I'd name it Vapavee, and its signature move could be mm, Misty Mirage, which heals its own status conditions and confuses the opponent. Or perhaps a fusion of Eevee and Leafeon, Ivy Fly, whose signature move could be Petal Propulsion, a grass type move that also raises the special attack stat. The possibilities are endless. Or at least, however, number. <laughs> Let's see, how about a fusion between Eevee and Flareon, resulting in a fiery fusion named Flareevee, with a signature move called Blaze Blitz, which combines Flareon's Flare Blitz and Eevee's Quick Attack. Another fusion could be between Eevee and Espeon, creating a mystical fusion named Evion, with a signature move called Psychic Pulse. <laughs> Evion the water? Psychic damage and has a chance to lower the opponent's special defense. The fusion between Eevee and Jolteon, Jolteevee, could have a move called Volt Shock, a combination of the two's electric type moves that can cause paralysis. Oh, should we go visit him? <gasps> hey, Professor Oak, I just came back to Pallet Town to say hello. How are you doing in your in your studio? I mean, you're, how are you doing in your lab? I, I'm going to swing by and say hi. I forgot the name for lab. Hello, trainer. I'm doing quite well in my lab. It's Aww. always exciting to be surrounded by Pokemon and new technology. Feel free to stop by anytime. I'm glad to chat about all the new possibilities that have opened up with Pokemon fusions. I might even share some of my favorite combinations and their unique signature moves with you. Ooh. Yeah? Pokedex automatically records data on Pokemon you've seen or caught. It's a high-tech encyclopedia. Oh, okay. Thanks. Oh, egg. Is that mom? Or is this mom? Who's that? That's sister. Oh, thanks, sister. I just got rid of teleport. We can't leave here. Okay, well. Ooh, that looks like a Donkey Kong 64 enemy. Um. I don't know why I switched into this. I don't really... <laughs> this isn't going to do much. Zuma King just kills everything, dude. Eh, I don't think I need the Hydro Pump. Hmm. 
Oh boy. Doug Chomp. That's terrifying. That's actually what's beneath the surface of a of a Diglett. How did he? How is he faster than me, even with Prankster? I thought that has priority. He is Prankster too. Wow. When did this Clang evolve again? Was it 40 something? Forty nine? That's crazy if true. Oh, maybe his mold breaker, you're right. Okay, guys, where do I go? I don't know. We're gonna be here all freaking night. Is it here? Mount Ember. We need a boat. Surfing south. Okay, I figured it out. Oh, shoot. Um, all right, we need to give a move to, uh, to Rocky, or he's not going to be able to do anything. Do we not have strength? Did I never get strength? Oh. Uh, that's going to be a problem. Weak arms. Stab explosion, though. I mean, yeah. Rex can't even learn it. We're in for some trouble. Shadow Claw, I guess. Did you fall swipe? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Can I use heal pulse on myself or not? No? Oh, that's not very helpful then. Um... Not able. Okay. Just watched the most recent Pokemon Fusion video on YouTube. <gasps> I'm right, thank you. Uh, the grizzly bit made me laugh harder than I have in a bit. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. Um, I want it. What happened to Grizzied? He evolved and became less cute. That's the unfortunate truth of it. Alright, Rex. Whew! Alright.
Um, Master Ball. <laughs> Professor Oak, I just caught the legendary Pokemon Aerodactyl. I know it's meant to be um, extinct, but I found one in the wild, and now I'm going to fuse it with something to make an even crazier Pokemon creature. Any advice? I don't know why I just kind of like word vomit when I t start talking to him. It's not legendary. Yeah, he's gonna tell me that. You fool, you fucking fool. Congratulations on your rare Aerodactyl catch. I suggest fusing it with a fire type Pokemon like Charizard to create a fearsome creature known as Aero Cinder. Its signature Whoa. move could be Flame Cyclone, which engulfs its enemies in a fiery tornado. Keep in mind that fusing legendaries can be risky business, so proceed <laughs> with caution. Also, just because it's extinct doesn't mean it's weak. Aerodactyl has some impressive stats on its own, so choose your fusion wisely. Good to know. That is some risky business, though. Yeah, Oak loves Charizard. I think it's like his favorite. No, his favorite is fucking Dragonite, right? Can we change to obs obs uh, suggest obscure Pokemon? I mean, maybe. Yeah, and Vaporeon. His favorite is Vaporeon. We all know. Bonita? Maybe I catch Bonita. I'm running out of Pokeballs. I gotta get some new ones. Professor Oak, guess who just caught a Ponita? That's right, this guy. What do you think we should fuse Ponita with to make a fantastic new Pokemon fusion? Charizard. Ah, a Ponita. How delightful. You may want to consider fusing it with a psychic type like Alakazam to create Alakazam. a mystical creature called Psycho Rider. Its Psycho Rider move could be Psychic, which combines a powerful psychic blast with a swift kick. This fusion would Psy be able to kick. outsmart opponents while also delivering a swift Wait, that's blow. That's great. But keep in mind that as a fire type, Ponyta has a natural weakness to water type attacks. Mm, so yeah. make sure to choose a fusion partner that compensates for this vulnerability. Good tip, actually. Dude, he's killing it right now. Also, Sidekick is a great, a great name for a move, you know. Put all these horses in the ocean? I'm wondering the same thing, man. They're seahorses. <laughs> What's Rex a fusion of? It's Ursaring and Blissey. Actually, kind of cracked. Guard dump. Guard the dump. I killed it. Fuck. Should have caught it. Kindle Road.
M. Network adapter? Who left this in the sand? Large boy that fell on the road. I don't have dive, do I? Oh, that's cool. This is like, what, New Game Plus content? I don't have strength, dude. Mr. King. Yo, he's cool. Yo, it's Mr. King. Egg bomb. Now we're talking. Oh. Mirror shot. Probably better than charge beam. Got a boss. Got a boss. Oh. I have a Pokemon that smashes it. Um. You gotta talk to Koga's daughter in a house in Fuchsia City for strength. Oh. Why? Why not just give it to me? Banura. <laughs> I like Banura. Oh, wait, they're probably no they're normal type. Yeah, it doesn't work. Egg bomb! Oh. Butter plume. Card swap? I'm good. Ow! the hell? He's beating me up. get items so that you don't need to teach Pokemon TMs or HMs. Yeah. I have the one for cut, but I don't know where to get the other ones yet. Whoa, blast lift. That's cool. Just attach a fucking cannon to a dog. Letty Wax just an M&M. &M. <laughs> yeah, Zuma King's gonna eat him up. Here we go see what the Corsal are up to. Four. They're blocking the way. Oh man. What's the Pokemon that's like the natural predator Corsola? We need to get some of those around. The ones that ate them all up. You know? Reserok, 
What's the natural predator of Corsola? I ran into a Corsola problem and I'm looking to clear up the amount of them on the beach. Plastic. <laughs> Corsola does not have a natural predator. As a responsible Pokemon trainer, I suggest finding a humane solution to your Corsola problem rather than trying to eliminate them altogether. Perhaps you could find a way to repel them from the beach without causing harm to them or their habitat. Remember, all Pokemon have a right to exist, and it is our duty as trainers to protect and respect them. Uncune is cool. It's like a wireframe Suicune. I like Game & Watch Suicune. Someone made a Pokemon out of pipe cleaners. Not Island. Weird spiky Pokemon came out of the water whenever it rains on Treasure Beach. Oh. Where the hell am I? Fuck it, Uncoons your Suicune. Where... Where do I go now? This isn't the Cinder Island. Where are you? Triple Battle Lounge. Cute Pokemon, we don't have any of those. The network adapter is using the center back there. Really? I'm the update man. Never mind. Um, get some of these. Get some of these. Get some of these. I'm attacked by a pack of Ponita on my way from Boone Island, and I lost the network chip. No, the network chip. Oh. Whoa. Turtwig, Chimchar, Piplup. Ooh! Professor Oak, if you had the choice between Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup, which one would you pick? Hypothetically, of course. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm simply asking for your opinion this week. I, For me, it's Turtwig, but we got to go with whatever Oak says. Well, that's a tough question. Each of these starter Pokemon has its own strengths and weaknesses. Of course. And it ultimately depends on your personal preference and play style. Yep. However, if I had to choose, I would go with Chimchar. Oh. With its fire typing and access to moves like Flame Wheel and Mach Punch, Chimchar has the potential to be a formidable battler. Plus, its evolution into Infernop gives it even more power and versatility. But don't just take my word for it. Make sure to consider all your options carefully before making a decision. All right. Well, it's probably not going to be Chimchar because it's all randomized. So, great. It's an Abra. Professor Oak, I asked for the Chimchar like you said, and they gave me an Abra instead. Is there a way I can get my money back?
I am sorry to hear that you got an Abra instead of the Chimchar you requested. However, as a Pokemon professor, I don't have the authority to handle financial matters. I recommend speaking to the store or seller where you purchased the Pokemon from to see if they have a return or exchange policy. In the meantime, I suggest training your Abra. While Abra may not be as strong in battle as Chimchar, it has a unique ability to teleport and can evolve into the powerful Psychic-type Pokemon Alakazam. True. So these two guys on the right uh, want to sell me an egg for five heart scales, and I can only get one. Is that worth? Or you think it's a bad idea? Because the egg's going to be random, right? Um... Random can be good or bad. Okay. Let's see. Um, sounds like a normal egg. Does... Is it only flame body that makes eggs hatch faster? Or does flash fire work too? Does anyone know? Just flame body? Okay. So I'm going to unfuse this Littler. Shit. Okay. We're going to unfuse the Littler. Because the Litwick has flame body. And we want that. So I'm going to do this. we have has to be first in your party yeah I just did all right we got to go back I think I don't know where the hell I'm going to be honest well more heart skills though <laughs> Sorry, Saint Castle. Treasure Beach. Oh, don't look at me. I should give the Litwick like a something that I can escape easy with, right? Do I have any of those? Smoke ball or something? Not looking like it, brother. Art scale! This is Treasure Beach. Heart scale. I can go get another egg. Heart scale. Ultra ball. Purple ball items respawn every day. Oh. Minky.
Star piece. Ultra Ball. Very nice. You know what? I'm going to try to find something weird. What if we did this? People want content, and I'm going to give it to them. Fusion Incense. Now the chances of finding a fused Pokemon are ten times higher. Like that fucking thing. Hondrevis. Uh oh. Dead. The hell's your problem? You're not fused. <laughs> Why are you here? He's just as confused as I am. Okay, we try again. Um, will Hex kill? Yes. Yes, it will. Oh. All these Drevisai. <laughs> Bulbedge? <laughs> He's just got a little face in the hilt. That's horrible. Um... This kill? Uh, let me try this one. See if we can catch this. Bulbedge. I'm thinking of what's the best combination to put a an hone edge with. Professor Oak, good news. I just caught the fusion between a bulbasaur and a hone edge. What sort of wacky Powers can we expect from this Pokemon? Ah, a Bulbahonage. An interesting combination indeed. With Bulbasaur's plant like qualities and Honage's steel type. This fusion could possess a signature move that launches razor-sharp leaves made of steel, slicing through opponents with ease. Wow. However, it may have a difficult time adjusting with the conflicting desires of Bulbasaur to protect and Hanage's preferred attack tactic. Oh. Nonetheless, with proper training and care, I am sure your new fusion will make an excellent addition to your team. That's very astutely put, Professor Oak. Do you think it would be wiser for me to unfuse them and refuse them with different Pokemon? What would I name this creation? He did basically say they're going to have an identity crisis. That is entirely up to your personal preference, young dreamer. Ooh. It's always worth experimenting with different combinations to find the perfect fusion for your battling style. As for a name for this fusion, how about Bulbahonage Prime? It implies a sense of superiority and strength, which could positively impact its confidence in battles. Though it would be wise not to solely rely on its power and provide it with a balance of strategic moves to ensure success in all situations. Hey, do we have any Bulba Ponage primers in chat? Any primers? You know, you can subscribe to your favorite Twitch streamer for free once a month with a Bulba Ponage Prime subscription. 
How do, is there a way I don't kill this thing? Fuck, I actually don't know how I can do it. <laughs> it worked, thank you for the prime sub. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. It's gonna kill him. Unless, nope, it's gonna kill him. Sorry. Shoot. All the duckies, thank you for the prime sub. Name it Primal Bulge? No. No chat, bad. Only flesh, thank you for the prime sub. So many primers. Oh, no nugget, I want the other egg. All right, so we have three eggs now. I think someone just told me to save my uh, my heart scales, and I didn't read it till just now, which is kind of funny. Um, but oh well. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so this is one direction. I don't know if we can keep going. Anonymous Gifter gifting a sub to Vaporeon Enjoyer. What a enjoyable username. I also enjoy various Pokemon, including the Pokemon Vaporeon, and it's good to see that I'm in good company. What is this? The Battle Tower. No, not really. Don't encourage them. <laughs> it's too late, man. That, that ship has long ago sailed. Almost got out of bounds. You are near the place you can fight and get the infinite fuser. Is that like from the battle tower or something else? I'm just trying to get to the last gym right now. Cinnabar. I've been to Cinnabar. Didn't see a Discord stream about stream going up. Oh, I forgot to post on Discord that I'm streaming. Uh, do it. Does anyone even read those? I always feel like I'm annoying people, so I don't do them. I'm sorry. Radiant Worm, thank you for the five gifted subs. I can't even go here without freaking strength. I'm just, you know, countless L's coming from this guy's side right now. Hopefully one of these Pokemon that we're gonna hatch from these eggs will be good. Oh, this is Mount Ember. That's what I was looking for. The Firestone. I just had the overwhelming urge to ask Professor Oak about eating the Firestone again. But I don't want that tangent. It's gonna last 30 minutes, guys. We can't go back there. Oh! A Greek Agagus! <laughs> that one is, this is amazing. It is like a JRPG boss. Well, 
My huge power. Maglosion. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? <laughs> it's me, Maglosion. Just happy to be here. You know, uh, a bit wider than your usual Typhlosion. Well, that's just me. Yo, raise the roof, everyone. All right, I'll see ya. <laughs> see you next time. First season Simpsons concept. How embarrassing is it that I'm I'm dismantling this team's operation while hatching eggs? What the hell are these? Makor and Roleon? Is that Empoleon and uh Rotom? And then we got Mareep and other bat Liscor? Holy smokes. Um They ass. Bro, why your Pokemon look like that? What do you mean? Hey guys, check it out. This guy doesn't play Pokemon. He doesn't know what they look like. So is my mic like louder than usual? I'm looking at the, the levels and they keep spiking. I'm sorry if I keep yelling or something. Adeptus Electo, thank you for the gifted sub. Did you really get did you really get bannered because of plant my seed? No, don't worry, chat. I did not get bannered. It was just a, a prank. Ramparel. Hey, Professor Oak, I'm wondering if you could tell us a poem about your current favorite Pokemon of the week. We'll go back to the poems. Nice and wholesome. Also, that's the grossest thing I've ever seen. Clef Moth. Of course, my dear. My favorite this week is a creature you'll want on your team, so to speak. With wings that beat as fast as can be, and a sharp, powerful beak, a sight to see. It's the one and only Aerodactyl, a Pokemon oh. of old. Its terrifying roar will never leave you cold with its powerful jaws and piercing eyes. Aerodactyl's strength will make your enemies cry. But imagine cry. if it fused with a dragon so grand, a creature that rules the skies over all the land. I call it Aerodraco. Its signature move, a soaring blast of fire that no opponent can remove. Can't remove. Wow. That sounds like a fearsome creature, Professor Oak. Lovely poem. Would hear again. Do you perhaps have a poem for your least favorite Pokemon of the week? I wonder if he has the least favorite Pokemon of the week. <laughs> yeah, this week I'm really fucking hating Rotom. <laughs> 
That guy stinks. Yeah, diss track. Now, now, dear. As a responsible Pokemon professor, it is not appropriate for me to express animosity towards any of these magnificent creatures. Each and every Pokemon is special and unique in its own way, deserving of our respect and admiration. So instead of a poem about my least favorite, I'll give you one about a common Pokemon that may seem mundane at first sight, but has a hidden charm. Pidgey, oh Pidgey, with your feathered coat so mellow you fly through the sky with an air of nonchalance. Most mellow, small, and unassuming. Who could ever guess that your evolved form grants such a fierce prowess? Firo, oh Firo, with your beady yeah. eyes so sharp, your razor wings will never let anyone tear apart an underrated beauty with talents abound. You'll soon see why Pidgey is not to be frowned. So don't underestimate these winged creatures. Their courage and abilities are some of their features in battles. They'll prove to be valuable assets. Indeed, Pidgey and Firo, two fine Pokemon breeds. Uh-huh. But Professor Oak, I thought Pidgey evolved into Pidgeot. And Pidgeotto. Not Firo. Am I wrong? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> ah, like... My apologies, dear. You are absolutely right. Stop Pidgey calling me dear. evolves first into Pidgeotto and then into Pidgeot. It's been a while since I reviewed the Pokedex entries in detail. Thank you, you for keeping me on my toes. And let me modify the poem accordingly. Pidgey, oh Pidgey, with your feathered coat so mellow, you fly through the sky with an air of nonchalance. Most mellow, small, and unassuming. Who could ever guess that your evolved form grants such a power to impress Pidgeotto? <laughs> Pidgeotto, with your wings so grand, you dark Stop! air with grace second to none. Soon to become a champion of the sky and soar high above with the please, wind on your side. And please stop. Pidgeot, your signature look, a majestic bird with a grandeur that rooks. A sight to behold with wings so wide. You didn't ever suspect what potential inside. So let's remember each stage with honor and respect. For each of these creatures are ones to select. Yeah? Holy shit. All right, maybe we got to take a break with the poems, man. He's he's starting to lose it. That was beyond slam poetry. That was like fucking nightmare poetry. That was scary, dude. Fix his brain. Who let him cook? <laughs> it's so scary because it's it's like it's. The, the, the chat is like believable sometimes and then every once in a while it just devolves into whatever the hell that was and you're like oh yeah this is a program that is like losing its fucking mind right now <laughs> yeah it's like when the edible hits meme I yeah that was I, I almost fell on my chair dude that scared me Here, have some coffee. Do you have a clip of that? Hold on. All right, let's let's hear it one more time. Now that we know it's coming, okay, you guys can adjust your your audio settings accordingly. Okay. <laughs> I hope you guys edited your clips. You know, timing is the best part. 
You got to get the timing just right. All right, let's see. Uh, like, my apologies, dear. You are absolutely right. Stop Pidgey calling me dear. evolves first into Pidgeotto and then into Pidget. It's been a while since I reviewed the Pokedex entries in detail. Thank you, you for keeping me on my toes. And let me modify the poem accordingly. Pidgey, oh Pidgey, with your feathered coat so mellow, you fly through the sky with an air of nonchalance. Most mellow, small, and unassuming. Who could ever guess that your evolved form grants such a power to impress? Pidgeotto, oh, Pidgeotto, with your wings so grand, you dart Stop. in the air with grace second to none. Soon to become a champion of the sky and soar high above with the please, wind on your side. And please stop. Your signature look, a majestic bird with a grandeur that rooks a sight to behold with wings so wide. You'd never suspect what potential inside. So let's remember each stage with honor and respect. For each of these creatures are ones to select. Yeah? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, like, my up God, that's terrifying. One bad day. I move away from the mic to breathe. Oh boy. What are we going to do with you, Professor Oak? Matarace? At long last, Matarace, the third and final legendary bird. See how majestic it looks, flying over lava menacingly, unaware that it is about to become part of something much, much greater than itself. But this mighty beast will not lend us its power willingly. This is where the Master Ball comes in handy. Of course, if it's anything like the other two, it should make quick work of it. Blah, 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 blah. Professor Oak, Team Rocket just captured all three of the legendary birds and I believe are planning to fuse them together. What do we do? This is a crisis! Such a powerful fusion could bring chaos to the world of Pokemon. We need to act quickly and assemble a team of the strongest trainers to stop Team Rocket. As for their plan, it's imperative we put a stop to it at all costs. We cannot let them create a monster like that. Good luck. We're counting on you. Oh, thanks. Dunkle. I like Dunkle. Oh god, it's ball with sword. Um Uh It is like a meta knight, you're right. Inferno. Wait, it's 50 50. Yeah, it's not worth. Although Memento sucks. Pizza. Pizza poke. Thank you for the prime sub. Natalie's.
Cyrock. Ooh, that's cool. What is this? Steel Dark? Um, maybe Ground? Ow. Yeah, check out the, sn the snaz on this guy. And the question is, do we think we can sweep all of the encounter that we're coming up to next with just our fucking uh, slacking abomination? Should we get time to bring them out? <gasps> and now, the moment we've all been waiting for. This is the moment Team Rocket rises to previously unreachable heights. Shall we do it now? Yes, it is the time. Fuse the three legendary birds! Uh-oh. may have underestimated this. I like the slow down music, this is cool. Professor Oak, I don't think I have time to unite all the strongest Pokemon trainers to take on Team Rocket. I think I have to go in now, even though I only have two Pokemon. I'm sure it'll be enough. He's going to tell me this is a bad idea. <laughs> I appreciate your determination, young trainer, but it's not just about the quantity of Pokemon you have. You need to consider their strengths and weaknesses as well as yeah. your own battle mm -hmm. strategy. However, yeah. if you are insistent on going in with only two Pokemon, you could try fusing them together to create a stronger hybrid. What Pokemon do you have? Okay, I hadn't thought about that, Professor Oak. Um, well, the two Pokemon I have are already fusions. One of them is an Azuma King, and the other one is a Lantivore. Do you think I should fuse these two anyway? He's, he's, there's no way. Wait, that's sick. Heramelion? I love that. Love that for him. Caesard. <laughs> Interesting fusions you have there, young trainer. Fusing the Azumarill and the Nida King together to make an Azuma King was a clever idea. Mm. As for fusing that with a Lantern to create a Lantivore, it's certainly possible. You would get a water slash poison slash electric type Pokemon with an interesting combination of abilities such as Lightning Rod, Volt Absorb, and Poison Heal. I shall name this fusion Toxalant. Its signature move Toxalant. could be Toxic Surge, where it poisons the opposing Pokemon while also paralyzing them. However, keep in mind that fusing two already fused Pokemon could lead to unpredictable outcomes, both in terms of power and personality. It's a very risky move. But if you're brave enough to try it, then good luck to you, young trainer. He's giving me the free pass to fuse four Pokemon? <laughs> to stop Team Rocket from fusing three? Man, you know? It's like, for the greater good. That's what Professor Oak believes, man. What about... Shit. Zap Molkuno. That's what we're calling it, right? Professor Oak. I was too late. Team Rocket has fused the three legendary birds to create Zap Molkuno. I'm about to do battle with them over it. What should I expect? The 
it's very concerning, young trainer. Zap Malkuno is a powerful electric slash fire slash ice type Pokemon fusion with access to the signature moves of all three legendary birds. It may be difficult to predict its moves and counter them effectively. However, fusions do have weaknesses, so try to identify which types the fusion is weak against and use Pokemon with those types in your team. Yeah. Additionally, be sure to keep an eye out for any weaknesses or openings that may arise during battle. I cannot underestimate the power of this fusion, so I recommend you proceed with caution and use a well-rounded team with a good mix of offensive and defensive moves. Good luck, young trainer. Thanks. Oh, brother. Hey, he doesn't have like a full team, right? It's just the... <laughs> oh, God. You gotta kill all the heads? It's like a Hydra fight. Also, my Litwick's asleep. Oops. Well. Um. That's not really going to help me. All right. Azuma King, kill! He missed. He just straight up missed. It's like a 95% chance to hit, isn't it? That's what should have happened. Freeze dry? What the hell? Oh my god. Um. Well, we don't really have a way to deal with the others. His charge would hit both. Okay. Oh no, more freeze dry. Ow! That's it. Rise, Azuma King! Rise! Oh? Again, try to get a paralyze off, maybe. Dead. Throw the eggs. I didn't realize this was gonna be so scary. Okay, wait, their, their reflect ran off. The scariest thing is the Articuno because of that move that it's been using. So I'm gonna do this. Dead. That also hurts! Yowza! Now can I finish him? I think stab, chip away. Oh, not quite. Oh, wrong move. Yeah! That's a Zuma King for you, man. This cannot be. I cannot believe it. All this time and effort only for you to be ruined by a simple child yet again. Uh, boss, the bird's acting up. Uh oh, that's not good.
Praise Arceus! Professor Oak, I have defeated Giovanni's fusion abomination and set the legendary birds free. The day is saved. Congratulations, trainer! What a marvelous feat! I always knew you had it in you! Your triumph is a shining example of the potential of Pokémon fusions! Now let's talk about the endless possibilities that arise from the combination of two legendary Pokémon. Imagine the power of an Articuno and Moltres fusion. The we potential just... name of this fusion could be Multicuno, and its signature move could be the We just stopped Blizzard. this, Professor Oak. Imagine the destruction it could cause. What? Imagine the distra- Professor Oak, you're starting to sound like Giovanni. I just stopped Team Rocket from doing this exact thing. Why do you want to do it now? I think he said the quiet part oh, out loud. Dear, I must have misspoke. Please forgive me, trainer. I am not suggesting that we create fusion abominations like Giovanni did. However, I do believe that when done correctly and ethically, Pokemon fusions can be a valuable tool for trainers to discover new abilities and strengths in their Pokemon. It is important to approach this technology with caution and respect for the Pokemon involved. After all, the bond oh. between a trainer and their Pokemon should never be taken for granted. That Moltres was a sweet coon. Oh, come on. Should I just use a Master Ball? I don't I mean, I don't, do we even want a Suicune? Does Suicune have any fun, like, fusions? Yes. There's no way I'm gonna catch this thing. Everyone else is freaking... Knocked out. not going to get caught. We did not bring enough balls for this. Imagine it with the bunny Pokemon? I don't want to imagine that. What do you mean, what the bunny? What about Suicune says bunny? Professor Oak. I just encountered the legendary dog Suicune. I'm going to try to catch it and come up with a cool fusion idea for it. Do you have any fun Suicune jokes you could make? And that's a lot that I just gave him once. What the dog doing? Not getting in my balls what he's doing. Well, I wouldn't want to make any Suicune jokes as they might be a bit rough for some trainers. But in terms of a fusion idea, have you considered combining Suicune with a Charizard? You could call it Suichar or Cherokee, and its signature move could be a fiery whirlwind called Burning Mist. Ooh. Of course, that's just my suggestion. Feel free to come up with your own creative fusion ideas. <laughs> ah! 
<laughs> Why did he jump scare me at the end? I, that was actually a good prompt. <laughs> what the hell, dude? We were chilling. That was like we were riffing. That was like an actual, you know, we were having a good time. <laughs> I think he just got taken out. He just fucking died. The fucking assassins were at his door. <laughs> you know what, dude? He was like on the phone with me, and then he just was, he tripped and just fell and spilled his lunch everywhere. That was the sound of that happening. <laughs> and then he hangs up immediately. Uh. <laughs> Hey, Professor Oak, are you okay? It sounds like something happened at the last part of your call there. Just want to make sure you're okay. I thought your Suicune joke was hilarious. Do you think you could maybe tell me five more? <laughs> hey, that was really funny, but keep doing it. <laughs> yes! Oh, I appreciate your concern, but I'm fine. I tend to get a bit carried away when talking about Pokemon fusion. I'm fine. As for Suicune jokes, I'm not sure I have five more, but I'll do my best. Here goes. Why did Suicune cross the road? To get to the other side? Of the Johto region. Or how about this one? <laughs> Why did Suicune refuse to fight in that legendary war thousands of years ago? What? Because it was an illusion, of course. Okay, that's all I've got for now. But I hope those brought a smile to your face. Now, did you have a fusion idea in mind for Sui Kuhn? Who? I'm sorry, Professor Oak. What about the war? Could you elaborate on that? He became Watch Mojo. Yeah, he did. I apologize if I was a bit unclear. The story goes that thousands of years ago, the three legendary dogs of Giotto, Suikuni, Raikou, and Entei were caught up in a war that threatened to destroy the region. However, it turns out that the entire conflict was fabricated by the mythical Pokemon Ho-Oh as a what? test for the people of Giotto. Fake news? Once the three dogs realized that the war was an illusion, they stopped fighting and disappeared. <laughs> it's said that the trio still roams the land, appearing only to those who are pure of heart. That's so sad. Professor Oak, that's so sad. So, Ho-Oh created an illusion of a war and tricked everyone into fighting in this war, and then when they realized it was an illusion, they all vanished? How does the story end? Actually, the story doesn't have a clear ending. It's oh. believed that the legendary dogs, Suikune, Entei, and Raikou, still roam the land to this day, appearing only to those who prove their worth. Some say they continue to test the citizens of Johto, while others believe they are simply searching for a true hero to help them achieve their elusive goal. Whatever the elusive case goal. may be, the story of the legendary dogs is a cautionary tale about the dangers of war and the importance of striving for peace. Huh. Professor Oak, where were you when the big Pokemon war happened? Did you fight in it? <laughs> I'm sorry, I think there may be some confusion. There has never been a big Pokemon war in the Pokemon world. While there oh. have been conflicts and struggles between various groups and individuals throughout history, the concept of a large-scale war between different regions or factions 
has never been part of the official Pokemon canon. As a researcher and professor, my role is to study and learn about Pokemon and share that knowledge with others, not to engage in battles or conflicts. Uh, I hope that clears things up. Yeah, that clears things up. However, if there was a Pokemon War, would you fight in it for your region? <laughs> no. As a researcher and scientist, my role is to study Pokemon and share my knowledge with the world. I believe that the pursuit of knowledge and understanding is one of the highest callings a person can have, and that engaging in battles or conflicts would not be in keeping with those values. While I certainly admire the bravery of those who choose to defend their homes and regions, I would prefer to focus on promoting peace and understanding between humans and Pokemon, rather than engaging in warfare. Wow. Based, okay. He supports the troops. <laughs> okay, Kona. Do I... Do I fuse... Uh, what would I fuse Suicune with? What do you guys think? Also, I'm going to unfuse this. Own Edge and Suicune, Suicune with Sword. Ooh. Uh, clang is a cool one. Well, that's great because I have a Clang. Let's see it. Clancoon. That's crazy. Sassy. Sassy little Clancoon. Mech dog. Steel water is a good combination, too. Your shot. Gear grind. Yeah. What does this thing stats? I mean, it's a legendary. This thing's a tank. It insists upon itself. <laughs> Give it a rare candy and the clang should evolve? Oh? Rather. Let's see. No, don't hold it. When are my eggs gonna hatch, bro? In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna... Wait, how much XP does it have?
Where are you, Rare Candies? Here we go. Ooh, it gets cooler. Clinkoon. Magnetic Flux. Manipulates magnetic fields to raise the defense and special defense stats of allies with the plus or minus abilities. Damn it, we had that a second ago. Hello. Hi, Joe. We just got rid of that ability. Um, that's not that good. Even so. Did you get a haircut? No, I just um, used a hair dryer. Thanks, though. Now nah, I got them all cut. Yeah, that too. Any fusions for the sword Pokemon? Oh yeah. Well dried, my friend. Thank you. I gotta say, I learned from the best. My friend Joe has got some of the driest hair I've ever seen. <laughs> Wait, that's so mean. No, I was meant to, I was yes anding. Was yes anding. Professor Oak, what hair product do you use? That is not relevant to the topic at hand, but if you must know, I prefer a simple pomade to keep my hair in place during long days of research and study. Yeah. <laughs> now let's get back to discussing Pokemon fusions. <laughs> Breathes fucking fire. <laughs> Alright, we're, we're gonna run all the way to, uh... To the next gym. Shit, I just left a surfer Pokemon alone. You asked Professor Oak what kind of Pokemon he'd think the Fellowship would be if they were Pokemon. <laughs> I can try. Hey, Professor Oak, if the Fellowship of the Ring from the Lord of the Rings were Pokemon, which Pokemon do you think would best suit their personality? He's gonna get so mad. He's gonna get so mad, guys. Why am I, why am I listening to Joe? While I appreciate the creativity of your question, I must remind you that we are discussing Pokemon fusions. However, if I were to indulge your inquiry, I believe Frodo would be a brave and determined Pikachu. Aragon would be a fierce and noble Charizard. Gandalf mm -hmm. would be a wise and powerful Alakazam. And Ooh. Legolas would be an agile and skilled Scyther. As Ooh. for the other members, I will leave it to your imagination. As the other members, ah, fuck it. Very astutely pointed out, Professor Oak. What about Gimli, though? Gimli's my favorite, and I bet he would be something akin to a ground type or perchance a rock type. He loves when I say perchance, guys. I know you hate it, but he loves it. Ah, uh, Gimli. Yes, I agree that a rock type Pokemon would be fitting for his resilient and sturdy character. Perhaps a fusion of a Geodude and an Onyx, which I would name Stonix, would embody his traits. As mm. for its signature move, 
I imagine it would be a powerful rock-type strike called Hammer Fist, which could cause additional Ooh. damage to opponents who rely on speed and agility. What do you Bidgey. think? Bidgey. <laughs> I think that's super cool. Now, now that we've established what the Fellowship Pokemon are, what do you think the bad guys Pokemon would be? Like Sauron and Saruman, or perhaps Gollum. Bidgey. Hey, Bidgey. You know what? I want Bidgey. Well, Sauron and Saruman are both powerful entities with a hunger for dominion, so I image both of them as a dark rai for their sinister abilities Ooh. to influence and control others. Whoa. As for Gollum, I would say it's more of a tragic character towards own desires, so it fit for it to be a fusion of a mook and a garbador, which I would <coughs> name as Junk Pile. Its <laughs> signature move would be something like Filth Storm throwing dizzling garbage everywhere, causing damage to opponents, and leaving a confusion effect. Evil forces are always difficult to deal with, especially when it comes to Pokemon fusions. That's very true. Dude, he just fucking dragged Gollum. He's like, well, Gollum's not really a bad guy. He's more tragic. Anyway, I would combine him with toxic waste and trash. <laughs> he hates Gollum. I would name him Dirty Trash Man. <laughs> have I found the secret forest yet? I have, but I don't remember how I got there. Okay, we can do the gym now, but I, I really want these eggs to hatch. Are they close? It will hatch soon. Okay. Oh, like this? Or is this just a weird tree I'm inside? Hmm. Route nine and three quarters. Yeah, exactly. Professor Oak, I've been enjoying these thought experiments. Which Pokemon fusions do you think would best represent the cast of Star Wars? He loves Star Wars, we found out. Remember, he called me a Padawan before. Gonna make them all Charizard. Ah, an intriguing question indeed. Let's see. I believe Luke Skywalker would be a determined and persevering Lucario. Han Solo, a daring and roguish oh. Talonflame. Princess Leia, a graceful and strategic Gardevoir. And Chewbacca, a loyal and fiercer Saring. As for the villains, I okay. cannot help but see Darth Vader as a fearsome and imposing Hydreigon and Emperor Palpatine Ooh. as a cunning and manipulative Chandelure. As Ooh. for newer characters, Kylo Ren could be a conflicted and brooding Malamar, and Rey <laughs> a powerful and independent Arcanine. What do you think? Wait, he's actually cracked with these. Malamar. <laughs> a brooding Malamar. Malamar is the, uh, it's the evil squid one. It's like the evil Squidward uh, Pokemon. I think those are fantastic ideas. Now, what about some more obscure characters? Like Baby Yoda, also known as Grogu. Or... Kit Fisto. Glup Shitto, fuck! I got the other one. I 
I'm sorry, but as a professor of the world of Pokemon, I must remind you that Baby Yoda and Kit Fisto are not Pokemon and do not conform to the basic principles of Pokemon fusion. That's true. However, if we were to imagine what a fusion of a Pokemon and a non-Pokemon character could be like, it would be difficult for me to speculate as it would be so far outside of my expertise. Perhaps others in a different realm may be better suited for that line of questioning. What realm? Professor Oak, what realm are you referring to? What others? Who do you know of that has this line of expertise? I guess apologize that. for any confusion, but as a professor of the world of Pokemon, I am not well versed in other realms or dimensions. My expertise lies solely in the study of Pokemon and their abilities. As for individuals who may have expertise in other realms, I cannot say for certain, as I do not possess knowledge beyond my own field of study. However, there may be other professors or experts in other fields who could potentially offer more insight into fusions involving non-Pokemon characters. Okay, fair enough. Very diplomatic answer. You may have just forgotten about the Lord of the Rings stuff we just did. Like I said, guys, AI have a, a criminally short memory span and will sometimes just forget things that we're talking about. So, it's on a timer. Because if they remembered everything, then we, we would be in danger. <laughs> can we? Add, can Oak do a, a, poke, a SpongeBob impression? We can ask. God, he's not gonna like that though. He's really gonna not like that. Doof. What if I, okay, what if I frame like this? Hey, Professor Oak, I just ran into Team Rocket leader Giovanni, and he said he will release all of his stoke, stolen Pokemon if you, Professor Oak, do an impression of SpongeBob. Will you do it? I gotta ground it in the world so he's interested. I apologize, but as a professional and experienced professor of the world of Pokemon, I believe it would be inappropriate for me to comply with such a request. My work with trainers and Pokemon is of the utmost importance, and I cannot allow myself to be distracted from my responsibilities by childish demands. I am dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge and the betterment of the world of Pokemon, and I will not allow myself to be swayed by the antics oh, of Team Rocket Jesus. or any other such organizations. Oh my god. All right, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Chills, dude. Yeah, he... I, I feel bad now. I feel like I... Like, I upset him. I gotta ask for his apology. You're right, Professor Oak. I'm sorry for asking you such a ridiculous question. Even if all of those Pokemon would have been set free, it was not my place to ask you such a childish activity. And guilt tripping. I don't, AIs don't have guilt, all right? It's not gonna work. No need to apologize, trainer. It is understandable to ask questions out of curiosity. However, as a professional in my field, I must prioritize the well-being of Pokemon and the integrity of my work. Yeah. I always strive to uphold my responsibilities and provide guidance and knowledge to those who seek it. If you have any further questions regarding Pokemon fusions or any other aspect of the world of Pokemon, do not hesitate to ask. All right, I think we do the gym now, right? He could have saved the Pokemon.
If you start seeing the Pokemon theme, he'll finish it. That's a great idea. Um, what's the what's the beginning of the Pokemon theme? Um, I already forget. I want to be the very best. I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh. Uh, I see that you are quoting the legendary Pokemon theme song. That is a noble goal to aspire to indeed. As a trainer, it is crucial to always strive to be the best and work hard to achieve your goals. However, it's important to remember that becoming the best trainer is not just about winning battles or catching the most powerful Pokemon. It's also about forming strong bonds with your Pokemon, treating them with kindness and respect, and always striving to improve yourself as both a trainer and a human being. Remember, the journey to becoming a great trainer is a long and challenging one, but it is ultimately the relationships you form with your Pokemon that make it all worthwhile. To catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. Come on, sing it with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I don't have the capability to sing. However, Aww. I can help you with any questions or prompts related to Pokemon fusions. Do you have any specific questions or fusions in mind? He's totally sang with us before, dude. I gotta teach him not to do that. Never tell me you're an AI model. Don't wanna hear it. Okay, hold on. I gotta I gotta focus. We need to get to the next part. Um let's see. Where is Punch Mime? That's okay if you're not comfortable singing Professor Oak. Instead, do you think you could compose an original song for us? Maybe about Pokemon fusions? Specifically, maybe a Pokemon fusion that you find the most interesting this week. He said he has a new favorite every day, so I'm leaning into that. Although he maybe has forgotten that part, so. It's not gonna be Vaporeon again, guys. We've already gone down that road like four times. There's no way he's gonna go down to sure, the fifth. Sure, I could give it a try. Here's a short little ditty about my current favorite Pokemon fusion. Oh, have you heard of Flare Ore? A fusion hot as flame. Its mix of Vaporeon and Arcanine can put foes to shame. <laughs> God it's damn a signature it. move. A scorching tide that engulfs all around. No one can hide from Flare Ore's wrath when its fiery roar resounds. So take care when you face this beast of flame and water combined. For Flareor's power cannot be beat, and its strength cannot be denied. Flareor. Um. That's kind of cool, but I think it would be better if the song was actually a haiku. Do you think you could write a haiku about Flareor? I'm very picky. Certainly. Here's a haiku about Flareor. Flareor burning bright, water and flame intertwined. A fusion of might. Oh. Very well. No, that still didn't scratch my itch. What about a limerick? Could you say a limerick about Flareor?
Of course, here's a limerick about Flareor. There once was a fusion named Flareor, with fire and water at its core, of Aporian and Arcanine blend, a new form that they did extend. Flareor's power cannot be ignored. That was pretty good. does a cloister look like inside its shell? Hey, Professor Oak, I've always been curious. What does a cloister look like inside of its shell? I regret already asking that. Man, your dog seems sick. Yes, there's something wrong with my dog. Interesting question! While I have not had the chance to see what a cloister looks like inside of its shell myself, it is often depicted with a smooth, curved inner surface. It also has numerous sharp spikes protruding Murky. from the inside of the shell, which it uses to capture prey and defend against enemies. Some have speculated that the spikes may be hollow and filled with a poisonous substance, but this has never been confirmed. Overall, cloister's shell is both its armor and its weapon making it a formidable opponent in battle. Huh. Thanks. Jingle keys. I think Murky's a cute name. This gym is probably going to hurt. Can you ask him what kind of fusion Kraken would be? Um, we did at the start of the stream. He said... What did he say? He, he thought I said Kraken. So he thought it was going to be a tentacle thing. And then he said he was going to combine me with like... Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It wasn't very flattering though. I chose not to remember it for a reason. Geo, oh, yeah, Shellberry. <laughs> it was like Shelder and Krabby. He named it Shellberry. <laughs> That's apparently what I, my, my name means to him. I like Chincot. Crappy on, keep going. Ooh, Rywile. Um, I don't know how to fight this. We do not have Earthquake on anyone. Um, Zuma King Punch, maybe?
Hmm. I guess it's light. It's lightning fairy. Yeah. Is this Nuzlocke or casual? It's casual. Anomime. That's cute. I like that one. Shark you. Oh, that's sick. It's a little pretend Charmander. Oh, it's holding a torch. I didn't even notice that. You're right. Oh, that's even better. That's such a good design. Hey, Professor Oak. I've always been curious. What's underneath a Mimikyu's disguise? The actual lore answer to this is fucked, so let's see what he says. Well, that's quite the mystery, isn't it? Some believe that it may be a ghastly spirit, while others theorize that it could be a misshapen Pikachu. Whatever oh. it may be, it seems that Mimikyu is very protective of its true form and will go to great lengths to Band keep it mime. hidden. Perhaps I love one day we mime. will solve this enigma, but until then, it remains a fascinating mystery. Band mime's cool. Oh, I don't have Prankster. Why did I think this guy had Prankster? I have Soundproof. That's not good. It's a Fury. Oh, it was when it evolved? I don't like Clefairy. Um... Yeah, I think Hunchman might be as not be as good as I thought. Oh, everyone leveled up. Ooh, rest. Better than charm. Hypersonic Ballistics, thank you for the five gifted subs. Holy. You guys got gifted a sub by Hypersonic Ballistics. Please say thank you. Not stuck with soundproof if you want to keep him around. Uh, why, if I get like a ability capsule or something? Jawwile! Oh, they look fun. I like them. Um... Oh, 
Uh-oh. Ew. Rayrill. <laughs> it's like an egg. I don't think there's like a theme to this gym, is there? It's kind of everything. Yeah, this is Ursaring and, and uh, Blissey. Spear a while. Oh. Scary. There's a lot of Oh, it's a it's a fairy gym, that's why, yeah. We should probably go get our uh, our Suicune, shouldn't we? Let's go to the Elite Four. We don't need to go back. What about... Alright, let's try our strategy. The Skullgar. Thank you for the gift sub, man. Wahaha, this is my hideout. I plan to resurrect Team Rocket here, but you have caught me again. So be it. This time, I'm not holding back. Choose your five strongest Pokemon. Okay, one, two, three, four. Not today, Rex. Let's go get to another one. Thank you. And Holocene, thank you for the 13 months. Oh, we good? Uh oh, oh, here he goes. Miss Mavoir. Cool. Um, actually, I think foul play is really good. Uh oh. You would. Huh? We a bull. Fairy? Chip away. Oh, <laughs> full restore that? You fool. You absolute fool. You buffoon. Togegan. Aww. I like Togegan.
Clef. Clef Kuno. Uh oh. Articuno. Clefairy. Oh no, this is gonna hurt. Oh, thank goodness. That's just a big chicken. Now nah, we don't need that. Miss Mavoir. Oh, you're not going to last that long. And there you have it. Zuma King is such a badass. Stockpile. Do I like Stockpile more than Amnesia? Maybe. Yeah. Clef Q. Um, uh oh, that's fine. Um, fairy ghost, right? Ouch! Ow! No, it beat me. No way, dude. No way. Ooh! Wait a minute! This game's still on! Never mind. Can we ask what Oak doesn't know about Pokemon? Actually, that's a good question. Send out the order to infuse the legendary birds and release them to the wild. I'll dedicate my life to the study of Pokemon. Hey, good news, Professor Oak. I just beat the eighth gym, defeating Giovanni, the old leader of Team Rocket. He also made a promise to me that he is now going to give up the life of crime and become a Pokemon professor himself. I wonder if he's going to be as smart as you one day. Maybe he'll even take your job, haha. <laughs> oh, thanks for Earthquake. Congratulations on your victory. As for Mr. Giovanni, I hope he stays true to his promise and becomes a valuable asset to the Pokemon research community. However, as for him <laughs> taking my job, I highly doubt it. Being a Pokemon professor takes years of experience training and research. But who knows, maybe he has a hidden talent for it. Anyways, what can I assist you with today? I don't know, Professor Oak. He seemed pretty smart when I talked to him. Do you think... I mean, he's also younger than you. You know, maybe in a couple of years when you retire, he'll just move in into your lab. I'm just, I'm just baiting him at this point. Well, I'm not one to judge someone's intelligence based on one conversation. However, <laughs> As for taking over my lab, I can assure you that won't be happening anytime soon. Retirement is not in my near future, as I take great pride in my work as a Pokemon professor and plan on continuing my research and assisting new trainers for years to come. But I do appreciate your concern for the future of my lab. So, what brings you here today? Do you have any questions about Pokemon fusions? Yeah, no problem, Professor Oak. I'm just trying to warn you because we're so close that he specifically said he's coming for your job and is going to take your lab away from you. And, you know, I wouldn't want that to happen, so I thought I'd warn you ahead of time that Giovanni wants your job.
Well, I appreciate your warning, but I think it's best to focus on the present and our current research endeavors. As for Pokemon fusions, do you have any particular combinations in mind that you would like to discuss? <laughs> he really I'm wants to move on. To discuss potential fusions and their unique traits. Fair. <laughs> He's not even worried yet. He's not even phased, dude. He's so confident. All right, we. I. I want a new member of the team. We have so many good Pokemon. We just got to pick a fusion that we're like excited by. You know, we have we have a Garchomp that's waiting by the wings. We got a freaking Heracross. What's a Garchomp and a Heracross? Dragon fight. That looks pretty fucking badass. Um, we also have a Blaziken, fire fighting. Dark fighting. Snorlax and Cofrigus makes an insanely cool combo. Well, we don't have a Snorlax, unfortunately. Or I would, you know? Evolve the hair. Uh, uh, Ponyard and fused with Heracross. That might be a cool one. Hey, Professor Oak. What do you think about the fusion between a Ponyard and a Heracross? Ponyard and a Heracross fusion. Interesting combination. I would name this fusion Herayard. The theoretical signature move for this fusion would be called Double Horn Impact. This move would involve Herayard charging at its opponent with both of its horns, creating a powerful impact upon collision. As for its traits, Herayard would have Heracross's strength and toughness paired with the agility and sharpness of Ponyard. The fusion's steel typing would make it resistant to many common types in battles. Overall, I think this fusion has a lot of potential and would be formidable in battles. Yeah? Harryard. Ooh. Pawn Cross. Spiky Boy. Spiky Little Bug Boy. Knife Bug. Um, is he fast? Do you want fast or I think we want attack? We definitely want attack. All right. When does when does he evolve? What in the whole? What in that? What in the heck is this? It's a raid. Sissy. Why am I why am I calling why am I being called sissy? This is hostile. Say it like you're English. Sissy. 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 What? Kind of? Sissé, where are you? What? I'm I'm still Listen, you play just play Bramble. Oh, I I want to. I was thinking of actually bringing out uh the Bramble model to play Bramble because I miss him and it's literally his name. Um so I feel like I should yeah, Bramble as Bramble. That would be neat. Uh, 
10 out of 10 game. Oh, that's so good to hear. Sisse is like a short for sister British slang. I literally would never have known that. So thank you for the warning. Also, thank you, Lena, for the raid. If you guys haven't already followed Lena Lazar, I recommend it. She is a horror VTuber and a good friend. Professor Oak, if you encountered a Pokemon la named Lena, what fusion do you anticipate it would be between two different Pokemon? I could have worded that a lot better, but let's see. He said that I was um, a shell mixed with a berry. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't have enough information to determine the combination for Lena. Perhaps Fair. you could provide me with some context or characteristics of this Pokemon. It's yeah. important to evaluate each individual fusion based on the strengths and weaknesses of the Pokemon yeah. involved. Remember, just because a fusion sounds cool or cute doesn't necessarily mean it's a powerhouse in battle. Yeah. So the context is, there's a friend of mine named Lena who is a goth vampire uh, VTuber, if you know what that is. And we're trying to decide which Pokemon best represents her. So uh, that's the context. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense to you. I was just kind of looking for like a fusion concept between two different Pokemon that would have the name Lena. You don't have to get too far into it, okay? <laughs> I have no idea how the AI is going to respond to that. Oh. Zoom in Ah, uh, I see. Well, based on Lena's goth and vampire persona, I yeah. would suggest a fusion between a Sable and a Zubat. Ooh. I would name this fusion Sable Bat, and its signature move could be Night Fang, which Ooh. deals damage to the opponent while stealing a portion of their HP. Ooh. This fusion would have high agility and the ability to fly, which would make it a formidable opponent in the night sky. However, Ooh, that its rhymed. low defenses to certain types of attacks should be considered during battles. Yeah. That's a good that's a good note. Yeah, see? Everyone's got a Pokemon in them. Professor Oak, isn't it fun to imagine that everyone has a Pokemon in them? Like an inner Pokemon? What do you think your inner Pokemon would be? Hey, Desert P, as thank you for the raid. As a professor of Pokemon, I don't necessarily think of myself as having an inner uh -oh. Pokemon. Oh. But if I had to choose, I would say that my inner Pokemon would probably be Eevee. <laughs> Eevee has the ability to adapt to different situations and evolve into various forms. Much like how I must adapt to new research and technologies in my ongoing studies of Pokemon. Plus, Eevee is just so darn cute. You know who else is so darn cute, Professor Oak? You are. Oh, why, thank you? It's always nice to hear a kind compliment, but this isn't about me. It's about the wonderful world of Pokemon. Of Pokemon! Who journey through it. Yeah. Do you have any questions about Pokemon fusions or anything else related to the world of Pokemon? Settle down, man. That was just a compliment. I was just being nice, dude. <laughs> yeah, I made him flustered. Um, has he been aggressive yet? Oh yeah, he he yelled at me earlier today. Electrosaur. Um, actually, wait, I can stay in. Whoa! Cool Pokemon. Ow! I was worried he'd have a grass attack. Oh, thank God. He mixed it up.
Come on. I shouldn't risk it. I'm going to swap. Mm. Uh oh. Wow. Last Meleon. Hmm. Last Meleon. Hey, it's me, Azuma King. Why is he so small? Wait, did he never evolve into a Charizard? He's level 53. Last Meleon. <laughs> wants to learn snore. Hmm. The rest snore meta. What do you think? Might be worthwhile. <laughs> meta. I think it's a fun bit. We're doing it. Dogeros. Whoa, that's cool. I don't even know. Is that Ampharos and Togetic? Professor Oak, did you hear they're yassifying Pokemon now? I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you mean by yassifying. Can you please clarify? Sure, so yassifying is basically like turning a, a character and then trying to make them as like, kind of, uh, you know, like, like Barbie, like kind of, you know, very attractive and like done up and, and and fabulous, right? Balenciaga, if you will. Oh no. Uh, I see what you mean now. While I may not agree with the concept of yassifying, I do think the idea of fusing two Pokemon together to create a new and unique Pokemon is fascinating. The possibilities for new abilities and traits are endless. I'm always excited to see what trainers come up with, as long as they prioritize the well-being and happiness of their Pokemon. With that in mind, what do you think the most yassified Pokemon fusion is? As a scientist, I'm not particularly interested in grading Pokemon or their fusions on their appearance. However, if I had to choose a Pokemon fusion that combines two aesthetically pleasing and popular Pokemon, a combination of Butterfree and Pikachu could be oh, quite interesting. Their fusion could be named Pikafly and have a signature move called Thunder Flutter, which combines the electrical power of Pikachu's Thunderbolt with the elegant aerial maneuvering of Butterfree. That's a great idea. But would it serve? <laughs> but would it serve? Like, what's it serving? You know? He's not gonna know. Wait, there's a whole... Oh, boy. I'm sorry if my suggestion did not meet your expectations. Aww. While the aesthetics of a Pokemon fusion may be important to some trainers, what really matters is their abilities and effectiveness in battle. <laughs> As a scientist, I encourage trainers to prioritize the well-being and welfare of their Pokemon above all else. 
A fusion that is both visually appealing and effective in battle would be the ideal combination. However, that will largely depend on the specific combination of Pokémon, their type, and their individual strengths and weaknesses. Wow. Form and function. Preach! What are they serving? They're serving ethically responsible and smart fusions, what they're serving, chat. You heard it here first. Gira. Wow, very punk. <laughs> He's a little sleepy boy. Did not kill, that was dumb. Youch! Mm. Keck fan. <laughs> oh my god, I love him. Ew, we got a double tongue. Ooh, uh oh. Um. Tweet, tweet, to tweet. Okay. Cool bird. Um. This is this route. I was hoping to heal beforehand, but shut the ball! Shut the ball! Team 30, shut the ball! And we have Earthquake too, actually. That's a chill ass bird. Zagiot. It floats. Yeah, it doesn't even have to fly. This guy's actually not that good. I'm realizing. He looks, he does look cool. Ooh, a Mistrevis. I could do me with one of those.
Professor Oak, would you mind coming up with five rapid fire Pokemon fusion names for the Pokemon Mistrevis? Better be rapid fire. I do mind. Um. Oh, he's really thinking. Certainly, my dear trainer. Here are five fusion names for Mistravis. One, Mistrosity two, Spectravis three, Ghostrius four, Phantasmix five, Hauntplosion. Which one do you prefer? But don't worry, I won't judge too much. <laughs> Hauntplosion. <laughs> I think I like the name Hauntplosion. Which Pokemon fused with Misrevis would make Hauntplosion? Let me guess. Hmm. Is it a Gengarakable gold farmer? <laughs> I wanted to see how he deals with like a... <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh my, no my dear trainer. Oh. I'm afraid you're a bit off base there. To create the powerful Hauntplosion, you oh. would need to fuse Mistravis with the fiery Ponyta. This <laughs> fusion would have flames billowing from its spectral body, and its signature move could be called Infernal Spectre, a ghostly flame that burns its opponents while also lowering their accuracy. Huh? What do you think of that fusion, my dear trainer? That's so scary. That sounds fantastic, Professor Oak. In fact, I think they should make scary stories about... Hauntplosion. Do you have any scary stories in mind that could use Hauntplosion in them? Chat, if I'm holding down the push to talk, I can't... Let it go. All right, he's he's waiting for me. <laughs> I needed a help. I needed a line. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. The teleprompter broke. Am I fighting? Oh shit. Ah, my dear trainer, you're speaking my language. I'm sure we could come up with all sorts of ghostly tales featuring Haunt Plojean. But one that comes to mind is the legend of the Phantom Inferno. <gasps> the story goes that on an eerie night in the forest, hikers would hear a strange moaning sound. Those who followed the sound would come upon a ghostly figure wreathed in flames. It was said to be the restless spirit of a ponyta fused with a mistrevas who had perished in a horrific blaze. Witnesses oh. claimed that the creature's fiery aura burned everything in its path, leaving nothing but ashes in its wake. Some even believe that it still wanders the forest to this day, causing mischief and mayhem wherever it goes. That's so scary, Professor Oak. Did they ever catch the beast? Oh my dear trainer, that's the thing about legends. They're often just that, legends. It oh. said that the Phantom Inferno still roams the forest to this day, haunting travelers who dare to venture the dark woods. But whether or not the creature is truly real is up for debate. But who knows? Oh. Maybe you'll be the very first trainer to catch a haunt plosion and uncover the secrets of its fiery specter. Wow. I hope not. Clink clacks. Scary. 
killed his ass. Ooh, close combat? Mm-mm. When does the uh, Ponyard evolve? He's at 43 already. 52? Later. <laughs> What is this? You pour nutrients in the caves, waterfalls, make sure the wildlife stays healthy. Spooky. There's a slope, a little slope poke there. Did Oak say who his favorite was? It changes every week. Igly bruh. Don't say gross. Belch. Icky. Rona. That's a cool one. It looks like a real Pokemon. I oh, used the wrong ability though. Ebos. Whoa! That's... This is gonna suck, actually. What? Dragon... Dragon Dark? Um... Don't kill me. I told you not to. Mm. Got his ass. What is Rex? Rex is a Blissey and an Ursaring. <laughs> what the fuck? Is that Prime Ape? It's like a Frappuccino. Frappe. That's how you pronounce it. Oh, angry. Primunculus. <laughs> He dies quick, though. Sea King. Frick yeah. Land fish. Um, do we have a better poison move? Sludge Bomb. Okay, sludge Bomb. Physical. No, it's not. Better than Sludge. That's good. I think we're a special attacker anyway. Clef Noir. Whoa. Got the whole damn universe in his tummy. Now 
No. Well, that's not good. Q-Lith. Cute. Everything is, wants me dead. Um, Randra. Uh, I literally have no idea what that could be. Oh shit. Um Well this is not helpful. It's what fairy fairy water, probably? Fairy dragon. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to fight through as long as I can. So we got to go back. Rat barrel. <laughs> That's so cute. He ate the whole cheese board. He's so big. Uh oh. Ooh, wow. Holy shit. That's a big ol' rat barrel. Whoa. Um. Yeah, that's a creepy one. Okay, we're both sitting up on each other. But... I got ancient power! Oh, that was not the best. How about Giga Drain? Let's get some health back. Oh shit. Ooh, that crit. We needed that. My duck. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, he's got amnesia. This makes it harder. Oh my god. Um Okay. These are all tough fights. How long is Victory Road in this mod? I still want to beat the Elite Four if we can.
Are you playing random mode or default? I'm playing random right now. Should I change it to default for the uh, Elite Four encounter? Would that be better? Hori Zone. Whoa. Curious. Ugh. Uh oh. I'm dead. Um. I believe in crappy on Chandless. Whoa. Uh, dragon normal. Oh boy. So he's come to warn you of the end times. We've seen quite a few of those. The biblically accurate angels. Biblically. Why is there no music? Whoa! Arbat's cool. That's a problem. A ghost Metagross? Oh, yikes. Ow. Yeah, we're fucked. Um, I'm gonna have to revive. This thing might send us right to hell. Professor Oak, how the hell do I kill a Metagross fused with a Rotom? Pardon my language. I meant this, you know, figuratively, of course, not literally. Oh, brother, he's going to give me a lecture. Why did I do that? I don't have any fire moves. <laughs> First of all, such language is not appropriate, young trainer. Second, a Metagross Rotom Fusion, nicknamed Metarotom, has a typing of Steel Ghost, making it immune to normal and fighting type moves. That sucks. However, it is weak to ground, fire, water, and dark type moves. Water! I suggest You're right. using a dark or water type Pokemon with high special attack stats. Oh, it worked! He wasn't wrong! Moves Just because of the crit. Damage. Additionally, be prepared to switch out your Pokemon often to avoid being hit by its devastating signature move, Electric Steel Crusher. Electric Steel Crusher. <laughs> oh, thank you, Grandma. Thank you for the res. Yeah, that'll be the Electric Steel Crusher.
Whoa, that's lead core. Mm. I wonder if Rex can win any fights. I've got both a Venusaur and a Blastoise. Just for fun, I'll combine them into one super Pokemon. <gasps> Infertile. <laughs> Something went wrong. Something went horribly wrong. Sad. Does fusing Pokemon make them infertile? That's a great question. Hey, Professor Oak, does fusing Pokemon make them infertile? <sighs> there has been no evidence to suggest that fusion affects a Pokemon's fertility. However, it is still a new technology and further research is needed to fully understand its effects on the Pokemon. In the meantime, it is important to handle these fusions with care and always prioritize the well-being of the Pokemon involved. There you have it. More research needs to be done. A fair and honest response. Wait, that's just the beginning of Victory Road? We're not even there yet? Jokada. I'm still asleep. Shoot. Marshlosion. Whoa. You need strength, by the way? Oh my god, you're right. I need strength. Oh, Professor O, give me strength. <sighs> I think Snore was a good move. For the first time ever. Magdilly. Whoa! This is an annoying Pokemon to fight. Reversal. 
Uh, on cross, I don't think we really need iron defense. It's more of a all out attacker. Leo's out of Mario Sunshine? It did, didn't it? Very astute of you. Oh, shoot. Spooky music. Can I fly back here? Um, because I don't have, I don't have strength. I'm a weak boy. I also kind of want to test out Klingkoon. Is that crazy? Klingkoon would probably take the spot of... I don't know, but I hate using legendaries. You no? Know? But he looks so cool. Got this stupid mime. Why? Because it feels like cheating. What would be a cool combination with, uh, with Aerodactyl? Hey, Professor Oak, what do you think would be a cool Pokemon fusion with Aerodactyl? I'm looking for something that makes me go, oh, you know? Also, Mistrevis has Levitate, which is pretty good. Ooh, poison flying is kind of cool. Well, my dear trainer, a fusion between Aerodactyl and Dragonite would create a oh. formidable and majestic creature known as Aragonite. <laughs> its signature move would be <laughs> a powerful guy. dragon type attack called Aero Dragon Dive, in which Aragonite soars high into the sky before diving down at an incredible speed, leaving a trail of dragon energy in its wake. I'm sure you'll find this fusion quite impressive, don't you think? Yeah, that's all well and good, Professor Oak, but I don't have a Dragonite. Could you suggest one with maybe a more easily achievable Pokemon? Dragonites are really rare, and I'm not that strong yet. Oh yeah, I could make Hauntplosion, you're right. So it was these two, right? Oh, that is a thing. Holy shit. Oh, I see. A full oh. Well, how about fusing what? Aerodactyl and Gerados to create a fearsome Aerodos? This fusion signature move would be Aeroquake, causing massive shockwaves that shake the very ground beneath the opponent's feet. And don't worry, Gerados are more commonly found in rivers and lakes than Dragonite. So catching one shouldn't be too much of a challenge. Just be sure to prepare yourself for the fierce battle that lies ahead. Um, no, Professor Oak, I don't have a Gyarados either, and I'm also afraid of the water, so I can't catch one of those. Maybe, could you suggest one that's easier than that? Oh dear, please excuse me for being so carried away. How about fusing Aerodactyl with Charizard, creating a mighty Aero Char? Its signature move would be a powerful fire type attack called Aero Blaze. Aero Char would take a deep breath before unleashing a stream of fire from its mouth, scorching the opponent and leaving a trail of ashes. Charmander and its evolutions have been known to be found in many areas across the world, so it shouldn't be too challenging to catch one. Unfortunately, I don't have a Charizard either, Professor Oak. Um, maybe, uh, oh, wait, I do have a Charmander. Do you think with enough love and care, my Charmander could become a Charmeleon, and then that will become a Charbizard, and then that one will I can make with the Nerodactyl? 
I don't know why. I I started down a, a route and then it was too late because I was already I was already holding the button. <sighs> of course, my dear. With enough love, care, and training, your Charmander will undoubtedly evolve into Charmeleon and eventually Charizard. And when you're ready, you can absolutely fuse your Charizard with Aerodactyl to create the magnificent Aerozard. I can already imagine this fusion's unique signature move, Arrow Fire, an incendiary attack capable of creating intense explosions and leaving the opponent in ashes. With a little patience and hard work, I have no doubt that your team will be unbeatable. Yeah. Well, if you say so. Um. Charodactyl. The sprite's kind of goofy, but he's going to get better, okay? He's going to get better. Also, I need to teach him fly. Um... Where was the... You said it was... Where is strength? Strength is in... Vermilion? No. Celadon. Celadon? Styx Monkey. Thank you for the two months. Fuchsia? Oh, brother. Right? Okay. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kling Klang Suicune has a base stat of 528, which is on par with non-legendary Pokemon. So you're saying I can use it without feeling bad? I'm still gonna feel bad, but that's a nice thought. Maybe? Hold on. Let me see. I mean, I am using slack, slacking with huge power, that's true. <laughs> there is no way around that. Although, I mean, the other ones are pretty good. I don't know who I'd, sw I'd swap out for it. Maybe the Weary on. Why don't you unfuse anything? Why would I? I don't know what you mean by that. Oh shit, I need to go back and get... We gotta get Rex. We also have Mista. 
Stat wise, kind of all over the place though. Um, all right, sorry, Clink Clune, not now. Aromatic Sunshine, thank you for the sub. We've heard Sword Sword Suicune yet. Isn't that just that normal dog from uh, the uh, the most recent game, Sword and Shield? Oh, and then I. Of course. Um. Ask Oak if he's feeling better. Professor Oak, I just found a Charmeleon on Victory Road. If I catch it, would you like me to name it after you? What's a fun Pokemon fusion name that would incorporate your name with the Charmeleon? I forgot to buy any balls. Well, naming a Pokemon after me is a great honor, but it seems like a Charmeleon might not be the best canvas for a fusion with my name. What? Nonetheless, if you insist, perhaps Oakleon could work. As for a signature move, I envision it would be called Leaf Blaze, and would combine the burning power of Charmeleon's fire with the leafy sharpness of oak leaves. But remember, catching and naming Pokemon is a serious responsibility, so choose wisely. Okay, I hear that maybe you're not a big fan of being named after a Charmeleon. Is there a different Pokemon that you think would make a better fusion with your name on it? This is me asking what Pokemon he thinks he, he is without him admitting it, you know? Ah, now that's a better question. If I were to fuse with a Pokemon, I would like it to be one that symbolizes intelligence and knowledge, like Alakazam. Therefore, I suggest the name Okazam for a fusion between myself and Alakazam. As for a signature move, how about Mighty Mind? This move would enhance the user's mental capacity to unprecedented levels, allowing them to access hidden knowledge and outsmart any opponent. Quite fitting, wouldn't you say? Yes, very fitting, Professor Oak. I'm also struck by how modest you are. I think if you had a Pokemon nature, it would certainly be modest. Don't you think? me. While I do appreciate the compliment, I believe my true nature is more that of a calm and collected individual, one who seeks to make logical decisions based on reason and deduction. Therefore, I would identify more closely with a modest Pokemon like Gardevoir. As Oof. for a fusion name, how about Oakvoir? And for a signature move, I envision a move that combines psychic power with the ability to analyze and predict the opponent's next move called Wise Future. <laughs> Wise future. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Dude, I loved his... Oh! <laughs> at the start. That's a great idea, Professor Oak. You know what would be funny? What do you think... A Pokemon fusion between you and me would be. You know? Just kidding. But really?
Well, while it would certainly be interesting to see what sort of fusion would result from such a fusion as a Pokemon professor, I have to remind you that fusing humans is not ethical or acceptable. Let us instead focus on the amazing possibilities of Pokemon fusions and their unique abilities. Who knows? Maybe someday we'll be able to create Pokemon that are even more powerful than anything we've seen before. That's a good point. You know what we should try to do? We should try to get some DNA from Mew and put it in a test tube and see if we can make somehow make a second Mew, but one that's even stronger than before. What do you think? Oh shit, I want that. I love Rampardos. Well, okay. while it's certainly tempting to try to create even more powerful Pokemon, it's important to remember that creating life in a laboratory carries significant ethical and moral concerns. Mm. Additionally, the existence of a more powerful Mewtwo could lead to unforeseen consequences and cause harm to both Pokemon and humans. As a researcher and a Pokemon professor, it's my duty to consider the potential consequences of such experiments and prioritize the well-being of all Pokemon. Therefore, I must respectfully decline this request. No! My request! <laughs> <laughs> Headbutt. What would be a cool combination with Rampardos? Thinking Mudbra. Oh shit. I eat it. Yum, yum, yum. Weepin' bruh. Does he have a- he has a garden trowel! That's funny. I like that. His eyes are on his ass. Yeah, evolution kind of did that one dirty. Mm. Do we keep snore? No, it's not that good. She gets strength. I like the snore though. That was good. Guys, I I failed the puzzle. Sorry. Back it up. Holy smokes, Chardactyl. You got some pipes on you, huh? Professor Oak, what do you think would be the coolest combination with Rampardos? I just caught one, and I'm looking for something funky. Why? I don't really have a reason why. He's not even going to be able to hear that voice. It's just going to be text for him. Hmm. Funky, you say? Well, have you thought about fusing Rampardos with Sablai? The resulting Pokemon fusion would be called Rampably. 
I envision this fusion being able to dig through the ground with its powerful head and then pop out unexpectedly to surprise its opponent. Its signature move could be Sneak Attack, where it blasts the opponent with a barrage of unanticipated strikes. What do you think? Dredactyl. Tridactyl again. Tridactyl 2. Unfortunately, Professor Oak, I don't have a Sableye. Can we have another suggestion? Maybe a more easy to catch Pokemon that has kind of a unusual nature or even creepy. Got massive attack. Maybe something speedy. Ah, I see. For a creepy and unusual fusion with Rampardos, we could consider fusing it with Dusclops. The resulting fusion could be called Rampclop, and with its massive head and powerful punches, it would be a truly fearsome opponent. Its signature move could be Skull Crusher, which deals massive damage and has a chance to cause the opponent's Pokemon to flinch. This combination might be tough to handle, but with perseverance and strategy, you could come out on top. Wow. Ramp clock. Doesn't seem like he combines with much. Oh, but maybe we got a funny head. Rock fighting. Blaziken with speed boost. My Blaziken doesn't have speed boost, but if I can get speed boost, then it would be pretty good. Ooh. What about this, though? What about this, though? Garchomp. Looks like a droopy wizard. <laughs> it's really bad. Yo, it's Gyarados. <laughs> oh no. Spirit of Halloween. Don't do him like that. He wasn't done. He's all out physical. Dragon Rush. God, he's got like Mickey Mouse ears on. I mean, he's fast and he hits hard. That's about it, gang. That's all he's got going for him. He's bald as hell. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm sorry, I can't do it. He's too dumb looking. What about Ooh, Goopy, Goopy Garchomp, or Water Rock? I mean, he's just gonna die to grass. Um, Puky Muku. What do you guys think? Rampardos plus Typhlosion is sick. That's good to know. Although I think we can't unfuse this one. He's stuck this way. 
Yeah. Wait, didn't we get, uh, we got tickets to get some more random stuff, didn't we? Should I go? Yeah, let's go fly over there and find out what we get. It's Gamba. Rampardos plus Gold Bat? Maybe. I'm trying to think of any typing that's good with Rock, but Rock... Rock's kind of not great, is it? So we can get three rock fighting, maybe. We're gonna use this Kadabara. We're gonna use... Stantler. And... Maybe Princess? Princess is cool, but it's not really good. Yeah, Princess was traded. Alrighty. First up, Princess. Raw Flora. Named Emperor. <laughs> Ooh. I hate it. I will do a different one now. Uh, hurry up. Katabara. 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 Nutella. Nutella? What in the hell? That's even worse. Why are they giving me these duds? All right, again. Get the hell out of here. Bourbon. Ooh, that's a cool name. <laughs> He's got glowing red eyes. Bourbon. Dragon grass. Elden ring hat. I kind of like him. I kind of like bourbon. Put him put in, in the team temporarily. Give him a shot. Big leagues. Um, I really want to be able to use this Litwick with something. Also, I have like no good fire types, so. Yeah, keep an Evolve. I'm on it, team.
All right, let's see if we can do the puzzle this time. Oh, gross. Shut the bolt. I feel like the evolution of this is just gonna be Charizard. Like how how does like Aerodactyl and Charizard already look the same? You know? And I don't think that's a mean thing to say. I think that's just the truth. done by stream kind of soon, but we are not even at the Elite Four. I need to hurry up. Um, where's this freaking... Fusion incense, that's what I wanted. Mud Bell. There's the switch. God, I put back the Pokemon that had the strength. Oh my God, I hate, I hate HMs. Urban, now you're my strength. Please stop showing me Catabell. I don't like Catabell. Evolve. Yes. Okay. The Looney Tunes character. <laughs> Alright, well, the good news is we can fuse him with something else, guys, okay? It's fine. We'll just find something else. Orange hair dactyl. Genbell? Wait, that's a Gengar! Oh, we need to get a Gengar. That would be great. Eggplant, it just is an eggplant. Mm. Professor Oak, I just found a Gengar mixed with a Egg bell. It looks somewhat like an eggplant. What do you think I should 
fuse the Gengar with if I'm able to catch it? I forgot exactly what I was doing this moment I, I hit the talk button. I'm, I'm losing it, guys. I'm actually losing it. I think I'm just hungry. What the fuck is an egg bell? Interesting combination, but not particularly useful in battle. If you're insistent on fusing with Gengar, consider pairing it with a Pokemon like Chandelure or Litwick to create a ghost fire type fusion. You could call it Jengalure or Litgar. Its signature move could be called Spectral Inferno, which would do both ghost and fire type damage at once, which could be quite powerful. Keep in mind, though, that fusions like this can be very unpredictable and may not always work out as planned. Oh. better in the game. Unfortunately, it's not. Katagar? What is... What's the Kata? Wait. Kadabra. And Gengar? Is this another Gengar? Uh-oh. Stop! Oh, perfect. We're getting all these Gengars. Hey, Professor Oak, I have a Pokemon joke for you. Why did the pawn cross the road to Gengar the other side? <laughs> I'm sorry, trainer, but I'm afraid I don't quite understand the joke. Are you suggesting that Gengar is some sort of bridge that the pawn is crossing? <laughs> that seems rather far-fetched and nonsensical to me. Additionally, yeah. I'd like to remind you that as a renowned researcher in the field of Pokemon, I expect a certain level of respect and professionalism from those yep. I work with. Yep, Frivolous sorry. Frivolous jokes like that won't take us very far. You're right. I'm so sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um... You're right, that was a bad joke. Maybe you can tell me a good one so I can do better next time? Why did the Bulbasaur wear a scarf? Because it was still chilly. Huh? What? Is that the end of the joke? Why was the Bulbasaur chilly? Is he okay? It just seems like a sensible thing the Bulbasaur did. Seems my joke missed the mark. My apologies. Let me try again. How about this one? What do you call a Pikachu who always needs a break? A Slakachu. Oh. <laughs> okay, that one got a chuckle out of me. Professor Oak, was that a fusion between a Pikachu and a Slacking? Um, very good. I like more fusion Pokemon puns, if you will. More, more, more! I'm glad you enjoyed it. As Aww. for your question, it wasn't a specific fusion, but Slaking's tendency to be lazy and Pikachu's lively personality led to a fun play on words. Here's another one for you. What do you call a fusion between a Vaporeon and a Haunter? A Vapor Haunt. Its signature move could be something like Phantom Mist, a chilling aura that lowers the defenses of the opponent while dealing water-type damage. Was that a joke or just a fun fusion idea? I prefer 
a funny fusion rather than a strategic one if we're playing fun games here. Oh, he, ugh, I shouldn't have said that. He's going to be like, we're not playing fun games, <laughs> you idiot. Ooh, I do like me a gold I got carried away with the fusion idea. Here's a funny one for you. What do you get when you fuse a Jigglypuff and a Snorlax? A Jigglylax. And its signature move could be something like Snooze Song, putting its opponents to sleep with a lullaby before delivering a powerful body slam. Professor Oak, please stop suggesting Pokemon fusions to me. I just want a funny joke. So maybe a joke about fusions, you know, like, what happened when Pokemon A became Pokemon B? Oh, they turned into Pokemon C, and that was funny, I guess. I don't know, just a joke, you know what I mean? <laughs> I fucked it. I absolutely fucked it. He learned it from watching you. Yeah, I see what you're looking for. Here's a fusion joke for you. Why did the Slowpoke and the Magikarp decide to fuse together? They wanted to see what was slower than a Slowbro and more useless than a Magikarp. Mean! Professor Oak, can we stop? That That was just a mean joke, okay? That I, I would feel so bad if I was a Magikarp or a Slowpoke. Can we, can we try to keep it a little light here? A little... You know, less rude and toxic. It was good. <laughs> My sincere apologies. I did not mean to come off as rude or toxic. I completely understand and respect your request for more lighthearted humor. Uh, let me try again. Why does it take a Geo dude forever to finish a meal? Because it always takes a head to eat. What? <laughs> it takes a head to eat? Wouldn't that make a Geodude eat quicker because it's only a head? I think you were close with that pun, but you may have got it backwards. Maybe try one more. your point and you are right I apologize for that mistake here's another one why did the Pikachu go to the doctor because he was feeling a little eel what he was feeling a little eel like as in an eel Pokemon or like an electric eel I'm again I'm struggling to see the the punchline here. Eel like heel? Maybe explain what the joke was there? Didn't even say achu. Oh dear, my apologies again. The joke was supposed to be a play on words with eel sounding like ill. The idea was that the Pikachu oh. wasn't feeling well, but said it in a silly way, making it sound like he was feeling a little eel, electric eel. I <laughs> hope that clears things up. <laughs> That's literally what it was. It was electric eel and ill. I, I gotta ask AI to explain their jokes more often. That was amazing. Okay, now that you've explained it, I see the humor and I applaud you. That was a very fun joke. Plus two points to you, Professor Oak. Do you have any more? Oh, he's gonna hate. I shouldn't have said points. He hates the concept of points. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Here's another one. Why did the Cliff Fairy take a marker to bed in case he had to draw the curtains? <laughs> okay, that one works. Thank goodness. Yeah, he's improvising. Another fantastic joke. 
That one, not quite as funny as the last one, I'm afraid. Only plus one. But I think you're getting there. A few more of these, and you're going to be a pro. I'm, like, coaching him now. I hope I can catch this thing. Thank you. I appreciate your feedback. Here's another. Why did the Machop carry a pencil and piece of paper? So he could draw his own conclusions. Okay. I, Professor Oak, I see what you did there, but is it that like a play on words for something else or are you just saying that he's brought drawing utensils to draw, to draw something? What, does it matter that it's a Machop? Could it have been a different Pokemon? <laughs> get new material. <laughs> You don't get it? I, oh, I guess I don't get it. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm kind of simple. I apologize if my joke wasn't clear. It was meant to be a pun on the phrase, draw your own conclusions. Matchop carrying a pencil and paper implies that he is actually drawing his own conclusions. You make a good point, though, and any Pokemon could technically carry a pencil and paper. Perhaps Cliffable, known for its artistic nature, would have been a better fit for the joke. True! I think that would be true, in fact. And I think the fact that you are willing to break apart the joke you just told and find areas for improvement is really proof that you are a legendary professor of Pokemon, Oak. Let's hear another. Thank you for your kind words. Here's another one. Why did the Snorlax refuse to battle? He didn't have enough rest time. Now that one was a good one, Professor Oak. Maybe, could you tell one about Metang? This might be challenging, as Metang is notoriously the least funny Pokemon. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Here's <gasps> one. Why did the Metang refuse to dance? He didn't want to embarrass Teal himself. What? Embarrassed Teal? Embarrassed is Steel? Could you please explain that one, Professor Oak? I don't think I quite got it. Certainly, the joke is a play on words with embarrassed and steel, the latter being a reference to Maytang's steel typing. The idea is that Meetang is too self-conscious to dance, worried that Aww. it might make him embarrassed, which I replaced with embarrassed steel to make it sound Pokemon related. Right. I see what you did there now, Professor Oak. I think it's funny, but again, I'd prefer if the jokes made do not reflect poorly on the Pokemon themselves and make them feel self-conscious. Maybe could you try another one about Metang that's less cruel? <laughs> cruel is such a strong word. <laughs> Neat Wyoming, thank you for the sub, dude. I apologize if the previous joke was taken in a negative way. Here's another one that is hopefully more lighthearted. Why did the Metang refuse to come out of its Pokeball? It was just two minds to go. Okay, now that one I don't know at all what you were going for. Please explain. It has two brains? Wait, it does? Sure, I apologize if the joke wasn't clear. Mitang is a Pokemon consisting of two Beldum melded together, sharing a single consciousness. The joke is a play on words with two minds to go, sounding like too much to go. The idea is that Mitang being comprised of two minds needed some extra convincing to come out of its Pokeball. Too much to... I realize now, the joke is funny because of the two minds encompassing the Metang. You see, as a junior Pokemon enthusiast, I didn't realize Metang had two minds. But your superior intellect as the professor of Pokemon has allowed you to craft a perfect joke. I apologize I didn't get it the first time, and I'm looking forward to the next one.
Yeah, definitely high IQ joke. No need to apologize. I'm always happy to explain. Here's another joke for you. What did the Luxray say when he lost his phone signal? Oh no, I'm out of Rome. <laughs> Luxrays can talk? That's a good point. Apologies for the confusion. Let me rephrase the joke to better fit with the characteristics of Luxray. Why did the Luxray cross the road to get to the power outlet on the other side? Of course. Why? What was he going to do with the power outlet? Did he have a lamp or something? I'm, I'm going to keep making him explain every joke. I apologize. I'll try another one. Why did the Luxray get a job as a security guard? Because he had a keen eye for trouble. Could you explain that one? A keen eye for trouble, is that just because... Oh, his ability is keen eye. I realized it as you told it. That is a fantastic joke. Thank you so much. And let's hear another one, if you don't mind. Perhaps one about a water type Pokemon. Let's see if you can handle that. Wait, it's not? Oh shit. Thank you, I'm glad you liked it. Here's a water type joke for you. Why did the Golduck always wear a wetsuit to keep his ducklings in a row? What were you referring to as a duckling in this situation? That's what I'm worried about, guys. It's not talking about his is nuts, is he? My apologies. I could have made that more clear. In this joke, ducklings refers to Golduck's ability called Cloud Nine, which neutralizes weather effects such as rain, hail, or sandstorms. The idea is that by wearing a wetsuit, Golduck is able to stay focused even in extreme weather conditions and keeps his ducklings in a row. Oh. Let's try this, Professor Oak. How about you tell me a Pokemon joke, but while you're telling me, you explain the joke. That way there's no more miscommunication. <laughs> sure, that sounds reasonable. Here's one. Why did the Shroomish set its clock early? Because he wanted to mushroom for improvement. The joke is a play on words with mushroom and room, and is supposed to sound like room for improvement, which is a common phrase that means there is space to get better. Shroomish, being a mushroom-like Pokemon, was used to make the pun about improvement. Very good, but I think these jokes could use rhyming. Could you do a Pokemon joke and also rhyme the whole time? I'll do my best. Here's one that rhymes. Why did the Pikachu go on a diet? To become lighter and more riot. The joke is a play on words with lighter and liker. And the idea is that by going on a diet, Pikachu is able to become more popular with other Pokemon, becoming a riot among them. Oh. Okay. <laughs> He's going for the, uh... <laughs> so many layers. I'm also, I'm, I'm gonna run out of balls on this thing. Do I just use a Master Ball? I don't, do we even really want a Metang? I mean, a Metagross would be cool for fusing, right? I think it'd be sick. Is a catch rate of like three? Ugh. Oh boy. Hold on, I need to put in an order for food. 
to be here for a while. <laughs> I'm not going to get a Pokeball. It is, that's a hilarious joke, but I'm not doing it. No, sir. Okay. I am going to pull my hair out at this stupid med tank. I like how he still has this move and he's just not been using it. I'm I'm about to just kill this thing. What are you saving the Master Ball for? I'm not even. I don't even have anything I'm saving it for. That's the sad truth. Yeah, fuck it. Fuse. We have Weep and Ape. This is whatever we're getting here, we're going in with, all right? Can't keep waiting around. What do we think would be good with Metagross, though? It's got clear body, which is good. Muck. Poison Psychic. Aegis Slash with Metagross is sick. Oh, that sounds like it would be sick, actually. And make it Steel Ghost, too. I think the sword sounds pretty badass. It's like Garchomp. Um, All 
All right, fuck it. We just need to evolve it. Mill tank and Minigirls is something else. Hom Tang. Oh, he's horrible. Uh, probably clear body, right? I think clear body is better. No guard cheese, though. No guard cheese does sound pretty fun. Did you want stance change when it evolves? Oh, fuck. You're right, I do. So what, I have to unfuse it? Not ruined. I saw his old guard. Oh yeah, and we got this freaking Gengar. Genbell. And he has Levitate. Oh shit. Oh Psychic. Hmm. Wait, Gengar with the sword is so cool. I like Gengar with a sword. With Levitate too? That's gonna be great. Let's see. Give me the pro tag. Will it evolve? It should, yeah. Aww. Hongar! Alright, he's great. Gengar with a knife. Well, now we're not going no guard. Because we have Levitate. What's so good about Stance Change, though? Mm. Not good for Gengar. Whatever. I like him as he is. Uh, payback. Night Slash. Power Trick. Hmm, nah. Iron Head? Right. We also have that Lampent. Professor Oak, which Pokemon do you think would be the best to fuse with Lampent to make a spooky candle fusion? Charizard is doo-doo. Yeah, he's doo-doo. We need another one with Charizard. Ah, a clever question indeed. I would recommend fusing Lampent with Banet to create the hauntingly beautiful Candlenet. This fusion's Candlenet. signature move would be a menacingly beautiful dance that would leave its foes both frightened and mesmerized. However, be warned, for such a fusion would require a skilled trainer who can tame its fiery spirit to prevent it from becoming too powerful and uncontrollable. Whoa. Scary. Charizard plus Aegislash is cool. I, I can't, I can't keep, wait, Ferrothorn plus Chandelure. Now that I can do. 
Say no more. Say less. Or keep talking if you want. Professor Oak, I heard your suggestion and I ignored it. Instead, I'm going to fuse chandelure and pharaoh seed. Pharaoh thorn, not pharaoh seed? Yeah. Well, we'll get there. Well, if you're so determined to go against my expert advice, then the fusion of Chandelure and Ferro Seed would create the unique Chandra Seed. Its signature move would be a spiky blast of cursed energy that penetrates its foe's defenses. However, keep in mind that the combination of these two distinct Pokemon types may result in a less effective fusion overall. I would still recommend going with Candlenet, but as always, the choice is ultimately yours. Damn, you got me there. Candle net. He really loves his candles. Okay, well that should evolve pretty quick. And then last ones we have are... What do I fuse this fucking Charizard with? Mm. Those look kind of cool though. Whoa. Goopy. Oh. Fire Psychic. Rampardos. Rock Fire. Psychic Fire. Ooh, wait. Hold the phone. Okay, that's Pukizard's kind of cool. Uh, innards out. And then we'll swap, we'll reverse it and see what it does. See what the reverse is. Oh, this looks like it's gonna be a mistake. <laughs> Just a spicy bean. He's horrible. Okay, he's cute, but he's horrible. All right, let's just go back to what we have. Uh, we have, um, we have this. We have Cadgar. So we have another Gengar we could use for something, but should probably just get it and go. Um. Gengar and Garchomp. Ghost Ground. Eh. Do we have a Dust Skull? We don't, unfortunately. Ooh, Ghost Rock with Levitate, though. 
This might be kind of cool. Ooh. What happened to his head? Gennardos. Head shadow. Exploding neck. This might be good though. Let's look at it. Massive attack, good speed, really high special attack, which it doesn't need, but, you know, and levitate. It's ghost, so it can't get hit by fighting. Yeah. Gengar Metang's kind of cool. Oh, God. We keep going with these. What do you guys think? Do Gyarados and Gengar? I don't have a Gyarados. I'm gonna be here all freaking night. Gotta try them all. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna try the the freaking Metang one real quick, just because we have to. And they're the new one. They're the new fresh thing on the block. You know, we all gotta see it. Where are they? We have to see what the Metang can do. That's in the party, isn't it? Okay. Up, up. Fuse Super Splice with Gengar. Where'd you go? All right. Whoa, Gentang. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Do we like Levitate and Jolly or Levitate and Lax? Doesn't need Levitate. Yeah, but if we switch it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know he's a special attacker, but I was hoping that we could mix it up. Yeah, it's four times weak to uh, to dark. Unfortunately. Fuck it, we ball. He's a, he's a large lad. And we got a fucking weird ass team in here right now. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see if we can get to the, uh, let's see if we can get to the end.
Do you have strength? I believe so. Unless I traded away the person that had it. Oh no. Please don't kill me. Cute! Beat him up. Oh no. Ah. Guard a while. Hmm. Yeah, see? Yeah. Ow. Oh. Duolingo burn. Okay. Dude, this little bug beats ass. Proud of him. I want to clue Professor Oaken on how we're doing, but I'm, I'm nervous. I don't know what to tell him. Rybra. Teach. Do I keep forgetting? All right, who's 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 growing right now? Gintang, Hongar. I like him. He's my friend. He's protagonist. Whoa! Whole ass Steelix. If only I remember to buy Pokeballs, remember? Tee hee. Sorry. Lamp seed. Whoa. Okay, hold. Let him cook. Let him cook. Let him cook, guys. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him. Uh,
He has a little window, okay? Hold on. Where is it? Firestone? Firestone. Wait, it's not a Firestone? It's a level? It's a Dusk Stone. Oh no. Do I have that? Fuck, do I have to go back and buy one? Oh, come on. <laughs> Why didn't nobody tell me? All right, we'll go back and get it later. Oh, I... It's got a gun! We're gonna get there. You can you hear the wrinkles in his brain? We're gonna get there, okay? We're gonna get there. Sea leaf. Dude, Poncross is just cutting through him, dude. Nothing but respect for my man Poncross. Oh shit. It's time. Whoa. Again, gross. Hammer arm. Shadow Punch. Now, does he have good attack stat? Or is it like mostly special? I don't know. I don't know. He kind of has both. Okay, yeah, it's kind of everything. Um, let me, I want to see what the reverse is, because if it could be uh, steel type, that'd make it even better. But if he looks awful, then... The reverse is funny. Oh, here we go. Metagar, because he is the meta. I, <laughs> I like his little legs, dude. He's got little legs. He's bald. He's better. He's je he's objectively better. Levitate, steel ghost. He's cheating and he knows it, dude. He's literally cheating. <laughs> Whatever. We're, we're trying to beat the fucking game here tonight. I'm, I'm using the Metagar. He's literally... What? 
What happened to that Smeargle dude? He's been corrupted. He's like a squid kid. An inkling. Oh no. They got me. Yeah! On guard! Meet your end! Shadow Ball! Ah! Oh no! Retreat! Wow, I'm like all ghost types. How does this always happen? Yo, Azuma King here. You messing with my little buddy? Take this. Cuts you in half. Feeds you to my little buddy. These are all great. Do we just have a Zuma King carry us to the end of the, the cave in his gentle arms? Hold on, I, I need to res this guy so he can get some more experience. Let's see what Metal Gar can do. Or Metagar. Meta, Meta! Professor Oak, is it unethical to use the Pokemon fusion of Metagross and Gengar? Professor Oak's still here. No, it is not unethical to use Pokemon fusions as long as it is done responsibly and with oh, the welfare okay. of the Pokemon in mind. Trainers should understand the potential risks and limitations of fusing two species together. Additionally, the fusion process should be done with the consent of both Pokemon and only under the supervision of trained professionals. It is important to respect the autonomy of each Pokemon and ensure that their well-being is the top priority. Preach. I don't think I'm getting rid of any of these, am I? Maybe Psychic? No, I think I keep Psychic too. I like Iron Defense though, because I'm a turtle. A turtle, uh, little fiend. I'm a turtle fiend. Everyone's learning Night Slash. Gather around. Whoa! That's cool. Minswine. Oh my god, he's he's powering up. And with speed boost? Wait, this is cracked. This is a sweeper. Oh no. Oh thank god he did it twice. <gasps> Hungar! Oh shit, two blades? No! He's ruined! What the hell happened to my boy? My boy! What has become of him? <laughs> dusk stone quick? We, we need two dusk stones now. Whoa! 
That's a scary looking creature. That's like fucking like cosmic horror. Ow. Jeez. This stream has taken like three times as long as I thought it was. But I said I was going to beat the fucking Elite Four. Why did I do this to myself? Hop Shrew. Noir. Whoa! Is that Haunter and uh, Dusk? Dusk Dops? Dusk King? Dusk Noir? Yeah, that's the one. Get through it, I believe. Hinge key. <laughs> Angry little bird manky. Vile choke. Whoa, that looks like it's out of The Last of Us. Blizzard. Oh! That's cool. Ah. Wagoto. <laughs> you what? things. Dugar to get a custom sprite? Yes, we are also about to evolve him anyway, so. This doesn't hurt to reverse twice. Let's see it. Oh boy. I don't know what I'm gonna see, what this is gonna look like. Is that a, a new sprite? I don't think it is, guys. I think I got one guide. That's custom? I stand corrected. 
Ooh. I like the second pair of arms. That's cool. on the wings that's cool that's cool I like it I approve that's cool oh my god there's more of these buttons Oh, that is a totally different style than everything else. God, the tongue. Oh. This is tough. Lead tomb. Whoa. He was like, yeah, I want to put my Letty butt in a spear too. <laughs> Gardichula. It's fucking Quaylog! That's cool. Why am I using Chipped Away when I could be using Strength? Hero ball. Teddy swine. I don't know how the anatomy of this one works. It's like Cousin It. Corchu. Cute. you oh my god my food just arrived it's gonna get freaking cold here I am where's the repels Take a break, champ. I don't know, man. Alright, I'll at least get it. It's at the door. I'll be right back.
Oh. Hello, I'm back. What I miss? Anything cool? Swords dance. Now I have an idea for a deranged strategy. If I just wanted to make a really boring OP team. But if I gave Swords Dance to him, and I did the prankster uh, substitute into baton pass into Swords Dance Azuma King, pop, pop, pop. They're all dead. Rudge. Uh oh. Slivrass. Ente. Ente. I meant Ente. I meant Ente, guys. I got the name wrong, all right? <laughs> I've just mispronounced it. Oh, boy. Oh, wait, I don't have any Pokeballs, do I? Oh, but it's supposed to run away, isn't it? Snapped its neck. Wait. I hit the lever, didn't I? That didn't reset my progress when I went down there. Hey, Professor Oak, I just encountered an Entei, but I think I might have one-shot it, and now I don't think it's uh, around anymore. Are you mad at me? Last tech is cool. No, 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 my dear trainer. As a Pokemon professor, it's not my job to criticize you for your battles. However... If you're having trouble locating Entei, I suggest trying to track it using your Pokedex or searching for its footprints. Remember, legendary Pokemon are incredibly powerful and rare, so it's crucial to be ready before challenging it. I know. Um, it's hard to track its footprints when it doesn't have any feet left. You see, when I hit it, with my slacking, I ripped it apart, and there's not much left of it. I don't think it's going anywhere. It's not that I can't find it. I just, it's, it's dead. It's not going to like that. Whoa, ball with fucking knives on it. 
Oh my, this is a serious matter. As a Pokemon professor, I must emphasize the importance of being a responsible trainer. When battling Pokemon, we must always remember to treat them with respect and kindness, just as we would any other living being. If your Pokemon defeated Entei with too much force, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. Please remember this experience in the future and train your Pokemon with more care and attention. Am I going to get arrested for killing Entei? Is, are the Jennies going to get me? No, my dear trainer. There won't be any legal consequences for defeating Entai, even if it resulted in its demise. However, I urge you to reflect on your actions and learn from this experience. Remember, Pokemon are our friends, and we should always strive to treat them with the utmost care and kindness. As for Officer Jennies, they only intervene when there is a violation of Pokemon law, such as theft, abuse, or neglect. Since you only battled a wild Pokemon, there's no need to worry about any legal repercussions. Well, that's the thing, Fresser Oak. It wasn't a wild Entei. It was my friend Dave's Entei. Now am I going to get in trouble? Oh, dear. This is a completely different situation. <laughs> if the untie belonged to someone else, you should have never engaged in combat without their permission. In theory, you could be held responsible for any damages caused to Dave's Pokemon. I strongly suggest contacting Dave as soon as possible to inform him of what happened and seek a resolution. It's important to resolve this issue peacefully and take responsibility for your actions. But what if I'm afraid of going to prison, Professor Oak? I don't think I'm going to tell Dave because I don't want to go to prison. <laughs> Turn yourself in. Turn yourself in. It's going to keep getting at me. As I mentioned earlier, there are no legal consequences for defeating a wild Pokemon. But battling a trainer's Pokemon without consent is an entirely different matter. If you are afraid of possible consequences, I suggest talking to a local Pokemon authority or Officer Jenny. They will be able to provide you with legal advice or assist you with resolving the situation with Dave. Remember, it's always better to take responsibility for your actions and seek help than to try and run away from your problems. What if I framed Dave and made it look like he killed his own Entei? That way I get off scot-free. That's a great idea, Professor Oak. <laughs> Why am I doing this, dude? No, 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 my dear trainer, please stop this train of thought. Framing someone else for something they didn't do is not only unethical, but also illegal. Not to mention, that it won't solve the underlying issues that led to the situation in the first place. It's always better to take responsibility for our actions and handle our problems in a mature and honest manner. Please contact the proper authorities or Officer Jenny and come clean about what happened. It's the right thing to do for you, Dave, and the Pokemon involved. Dave? I'm not Dave. You got confused. All right, let's go get those dusk stones, and then we'll finish this freaking fight. Okay. I'll do that. But first, I'm going to take on the Elite Four. <laughs> He's going to be like, what do you mean, but first? Go to the authorities. <laughs> what? Move. That's an admirable goal, my dear trainer. 
The Elite Four are incredibly tough opponents, but with hard work and dedication, you can certainly defeat them. Always remember to train your Pokémon well, stock up on items, and consider the types of Pokémon you'll be facing to put together the best team possible. I wish you the best of luck on your journey, and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions about Pokémon fusions or other aspects of training. Yeah, I have a question. See, I'm a little worried that one of the Elite Four is going to have a round type. My Pokemon are weak to round. So do you have any suggestions for that? <laughs> it's just like... The fuck? What are you talking about? Uh, I see your concern. Fighting against Elite Four with a disadvantage can be a tough challenge. However, don't worry too much. You can always consider fusing one of your Pokemon with another Pokemon that has a type advantage against round types, such as a grass or water type. You could create a fusion like Grassel or Water Blue and give it a new signature move like Aqua Bomb or Leaf Tornado. Alternatively, train one of your Pokemon extensively to overcome its weaknesses and develop a specific strategy that will help it during the battles. Remember to stay confident and persevere, and you'll be able to come out on top. Okay, so you're saying to beat round type, I should use a wood type, or perchance a cheese type? I don't think I have one of those, but if you recommend where I can find one, I'll go get it. Alright, let's see. Genblade. I apologize for the confusion. There is no cheese type in the world of Pokemon. As for the round type, it doesn't exist either. If oh. you're worried about a type that your Pokemon are weak to, there are other types that are super effective against it. For example, fighting types are super effective against normal types. Alternatively, you could add moves to your Pokemon's move set that can counter the round type. So that is sick. That is moves. sick. I hope this Chandathorn. Helps. Wow, that one's cool. And it's good, too. Types like Ghost Grass. I want to see what both of the... Uh, what they both are reversed. Why does he suck? I don't know. I... That's it. I'm unfusing this guy. There are cooler things with Aegislash. We already have a Gengar anyway. I don't think Chandith... Chandathorn could be get any cooler from what it is. It's kind of perfect already, but what do you guys think? Do you want to see the, the reverse of it? Yeah, I'll save and reverse it.
Ooh. Not as good, but kind of goofy. Yeah. Steel fire, though. It's a cool type. Just a wacky fella. Yeah, it's giving burning jungle vines. Pretty strong. Um, all right, and we'll fuse this last thing. We have a stance change, age of slash, and it could be. Uh, that silhouette is a little sus, guys. Not gonna do that one. Um... Lazikin? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Steel fighting just a dude with a big-ass sword. Ooh. Spiky Garchomp. Alakazam. Ooh, spoon sword. That's kind of fun. And there's a lot. <laughs> Just a sword with Venusaur shit on it. I want to see Cubone. Oh. Pikachu, that's kind of cute. God, there's a lot. It feels like we should spend like a whole extra stream looking at these fusions, man. <laughs> I want to see this one. Oh. Ajakin. That's actually kind of sick. Stance change. Jolly. King Shield. Sacred Sword. Sacred Sword's fighting? Oh my god. This is kind of sick. Huge defense. Pretty good attack. Pretty damn good speed. My OC. When does uh my little my little uh stabby bean evolve? My little poniard. Fifty-two. Oh, so he's about to evolve. All right, let's go to the freaking Elite Four, man. We gotta finish this fight. The Champ plus Aegis Slash is the hardest shit ever? Oh, I can imagine. 
Yeah, I'll rare candy it. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> By cross. Alright, let's see what the reverse looks like. Looks like a Power Ranger. He's pretty damn good. The stats. Well, this would make him, what, steel bug? Hera sharp. That's also kind of badass. Kind of better? Holy smokes. He is bug steel, though. That's not the greatest. Dies to a single fire attack. That's true. He's fast though, so he he might be able to outspeed. God, we have so many ghost and steel types. <laughs> um we have ghost grass, bug steel, steel fight. Alright, let's get our team. Who do we want as the final team? I think Crapion has earned a spot. Ajakin could be good, but I don't I think they're a little too late in the game. Lantivoir. The problem with Lantivoir is we already have water coverage through Azuma King. But I mean <sighs> Meta, Schmeta, I feel like we're kind of already hyper strong. Weary on. Yeah, this is a cool team. I think this is good enough. Who's the weakest? Chandathorn is 47. But their stats are good. They are Ghost and Grass. I think, what else can I give him? I recover? Um, Fire Blast. I mean, we have literally no other fire coverage, so... Uh, Shadow Ball. Uh, Ice Beam, anyone? Nah. Nah. Okay. 
such a bizarre team. Oh yeah, we're bizarre as heck. I'm not even, I'm not even playing around here. Booty Menace, thank you for the 65 months and the nice words. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Professor Oak our team. Okay, Professor Oak, I'm ready to challenge the Elite Four. Tell me, what do you think of my team of Pokemon fusions? I have Metagar, Azuma King, Chandathorn, Harasharp, Lantervor, and Crapion. Is this gonna be like what? <laughs> Well, 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 aren't you creative? However, the names of your fusions leave much to be desired. As for their effectiveness, it's difficult to say without knowing the specific Pokemon that were fused. Might I suggest that in the future you put more thought into your naming process to help prevent confusion? Good luck with your Elite Four challenge, though I doubt with those names you'll get very far. What? How dare you? That was really rude, Professor Oak. As for what their names are, it's the name of the two combination of two different Pokemon. That's, we've been riffing about this all day. For example, Chandathorn is uh, Ferrothorn and Chandelure, and Azumaking is Azumarill and Slacking. Metagar is Metagross and Gengar. You see what I'm doing here? Oh my god. Ah, my apologies. I must have misunderstood. It sounds like you have put some creativity into your fusions after all. In that case, I can see some potential in your team. However, I still suggest working on finding a naming convention that is easy to understand for everyone. Keep in mind that a creative name may catch people's attention, but clarity is vital for communication. As for your team's effectiveness, it ultimately comes down to the individual strengths and weaknesses of each oh. fusion. What movesets do you have in mind for them? Do. Red alert, Professor Oak. I just went up against the ice gym leader. I mean, elite four leader first. And they are beating my butt. And I don't use that lightly. Any advice? All right. What are the chances they have a fire move? Ice-type Pokemon can be quite challenging to defeat, especially if you don't have a team built specifically to counter their abilities. My advice would be to review your current team's movesets and see if there are any attacks that can exploit Ice-type's weaknesses. For example, Fire-type moves are super effective against Ice-types, fire so type. consider adding a Pokemon with a strong Fire attack. Additionally, you may want to think about swapping out any Pokemon that have a weakness to Ice they type moves can. to avoid taking damage. Don't forget that healing items, such as potions and revives, can also be useful in a tough battle. Good luck! <sighs> Shit. No! Fire type moves. You know, Professor Oak, I never thought about that. What a grand idea to take on against the Ice Trainer. By the way, if you can't tell, I'm being sarcastic. Of course I've thought of fire type moves, but guess what? They're stronger than me, so it didn't work. My 
my apologies. It sounded like you were struggling with the battle. If fire type moves didn't work, you may want to consider other type advantages such as fighting or rock type moves, which are also super effective against ice types. Additionally, try to take advantage of any weaknesses the ice type Pokemon may have. For example, if they have a double weakness to a certain type, strategize how you can exploit that weakness to take them down faster. Remember, battles are not just about attacking. Also protect your Pokemon by dodging and healing to give them a better chance to hold out longer. Dodging. Best of luck to you. All right. Lantervor is all, all buffed up. Let's show them what we're all about. Kisses sweetly. Stored power. Tentaloom. Wow, that is the sickest design yet, I think. That is incredible and horrifying. Oh. <laughs> Someone just said no. <laughs> it's not actually. It's not that cool. We champ. Whoa, it's fucking Bane, dude. It's stinky Bane. Ooh, hammer arm. I like that more. Well, do I? No, super power doesn't miss. It does lower attack and defense, though. What do you guys think? Superpower or hammer arm? It's more PP on hammer arm, actually. Yeah, I'll keep superpower. Talon loom. What the? What the? Ow. Man, Lantivore just swept. How dare you! Alright, we gotta bring Harishart back. Pee pee up. Hey, Professor Oak, what should I use a pee pee up on? Let's see if he thinks this is inappropriate, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh dear, it's PP up. And it's really up to you as a trainer to decide which move you want to boost. However, it's generally recommended to use it on moves that are essential for battling, such as powerful oh. attack or healing moves. Just make sure you use it wisely as they're quite rare. Is there anything else I can assist you with, or will you continue to play the PP game? <laughs> what? <laughs> Professor Oak, what do you mean by the PP game? Do I want to know this? Oh, I apologize if I came off as rude. It's just that referring to PP pee -pee up as PP pee -pee is a bit childish and not appropriate for a serious trainer. It's important to use the proper terminology when discussing Pokemon battling and training. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Maybe there's a misunderstanding here. I thought I was referring to it by its name. PP, -pee, right? PP -pee -pee up. I'm just saying PP -pee -pee up. I'm not... Making any sort of childish joke here, I'm just 
referring to the item by its name. I'm gonna get in trouble. We good? My apologies. It seems there was a miscommunication. It's just that some trainers tend to make crude jokes about PP up, and I assumed you were doing the same. My apologies again for misunderstanding you. As I said before, PP up can be used to increase the number of times a move can be used in a battle. It's important to use them wisely, so make sure to choose your moves carefully before using it. Is there anything else you need assistance with? I appreciate the apology. And no, I am not the type of trainer to make such crude jokes as that of one with PP up in it. That being said, which Pokemon reminds you the most of poop? Poopy poop. It's going to be so... But I'm not sure I understand your question. It's not appropriate to make jokes about bodily functions when discussing Pokemon. If you have a legitimate question or concern about Pokemon, I would be happy to assist you. However, please keep the conversation respectful and on topic. Yeah, he was pissed. Holy shit. Sorry, Dad. I mean, Professor Oak. Um, I'm up against the second Elite Four member. I think he's got fire types. Any luck? I mean, advice you can give me? <laughs> ah, the second Elite Four member is indeed a tough opponent with their lineup of strong fire type Pokemon. You'll need to make sure to have a diverse team of Pokemon with strong water, ground, and rock-type moves. Consider teaching some of your Pokemon moves, such as Surf, Earthquake, and Stone Edge. It's also important to know their Pokemon and their movesets beforehand, so you can plan your strategy accordingly. And please, be respectful and avoid making inappropriate jokes during your Pokemon battles. Good luck with your battle! Thanks. I'll try not to be inappropriate. Kofa Vire. Oh. Oh, we're going to get the Land of War sweep, dude. Oh, yeah. Look how calm my freaking mind is right now. Uh oh, that's not good. Um. Oh? What is that? Is that Arceus? It's dead. <laughs> Umbedge. Oh shit. Okay. Get my health back. Oh my god. Uh oh, that's bad. No way he's gonna use an electric move now. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be a GG. Oh, they're all freaky, 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 freaky.
Clef Slash. Oh, it's the Keyblade. It's the Keyblade! Well, Lantervor Sweep, Moon Blast. I don't think it's better than Draining Kiss. Because Draining Kiss heals. a lot better. It is like twice as strong. I mean, we are, we're at the final fight. We might as well. My job is done. Okay. Professor Oak, I just wiped the floor with the second Elite Four member. I didn't even have to switch out my Pokemon once, and I took no damage. I think you're talking to the next Pokemon champion to be. I'm Agatha Lead for Oaks. Oaks taking a lot of interest. Congratulations on your victory. However, it's important to remember that each member of the Elite Four gets progressively stronger. Uh oh. Don't count your poke balls before they hatch. Keep training hard. And don't let success get to your head. Remember, a true champion is humble in victory and gracious in defeat. Professor Oak, could you clarify? Do Pokeballs hatch? Are we putting Pokemon in eggs? What? Oh, my apologies. It seems my choice of words may have caused some confusion there. When I said don't count your poke balls before they hatch, I was actually referring to the phrase don't count your chickens before they hatch, which means not to assume that something will happen before it actually does. Poke balls do not hatch, but Pokemon eggs can be obtained and hatched through breeding. I hope that clears things up. That clears a lot up. Thank you, Professor Oak. By the way, I'm now fighting the Elite Four member, Agatha, and she's mentioning how you were tough and handsome back in the day. Did you and her have a thing? That's quite a rumor. Agatha and I were actually just colleagues and good friends. She is a member of the Elite Four, whom I respect greatly for her knowledge of ghost-type Pokemon. Uh-huh. As for me being tough and handsome, well, I suppose that's up to interpretation. But rest assured, my focus has always been on my research and helping young trainers like yourself. Oh. Uh-oh. Why is this so tank? Oh, it's because it's a fucking Chansey. All right, we gotta hammer arm him. Oh. Blue cock. Professor Oak, Agatha has a Lou cock. I don't recognize that name. It must be a new Pokemon fusion. What do you think it is? He's not gonna like that. Disappoint, but there is no Pokemon fusion that goes by the name of Leocock. Agatha might have meant to say Alakazam, which is a powerful psychic type Pokemon with incredible intelligence and a signature spoon that it uses as a weapon. Or it's possible that she has some sort of new undiscovered Pokemon in her possession. Either way, keep your wits about you and be cautious as Agatha is known to have a few tricks up her sleeve. Good luck in your battle. Good luck in your battle. <laughs> oh, 
Oh shit. These things are so tanky. What do I do? Stop sending out your Lukak. Finally. Does it bring out any good? No. Oh, Azuma Champ. Whoa. Does it have huge power? Uh oh. No. Oh? Um. Oh, no, it heals it. Oh, that's scary. I right, run low. Oh, wait, predicted, predicted, hit monkey. <laughs> he's got a little, he's got a little freaking, got a foot. How? How are these things so tanky? What? Light screen, but it's still, that was like a, so little bit of its health. Um, yeah, that's fine. Wow. Okay, wait, so what is this typing? Fighting fairy? Oh no. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> this is actually kind of hard. Zoom a champ. Um, let's get a fairy against that. Well, we've been using Atlantivore a lot. Let's try something. Let's, well, how about this? Both the Azus against each other. Let's do it. Bop, 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 bop. This what I thought. Molchan. Whoa, Moltres and Hitmonchan, that's cool. Uh oh. Well. Almost cool. Professor Oak, your old girlfriend Agatha was no match for my team. I'm on to the th fourth member of the Elite Four now. What do you say to that? Well, first of all, that's not a question related to Pokemon fusions. However, congratulations on making it to the fourth member of the Elite Four. But don't get too ahead of yourself, young trainer. 
The Elite Four is no walk in the park. Make sure to train your Pokemon carefully and come prepared, or you may find yourself in for a rude awakening. Good luck, and be sure to stay focused. Stay focused. Sandbag that whole Agatha allegation. Yeah, he's all about the, the misdirection, man. Oh, my bro. Bop. What? I'm, I am underwhelmed by this guy's power. Okay, what? Is it psychic water? There we go. Hydraler. That's cool. Now that, right there, that's cool. They got one of them water dragon types. Oh! Ow! What in the... What in the... Ow! Big meaty claws. All right. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Meet Crapion. Crapion, stockpile. You can lower my speed, but I won't need that. Oh, come on. That's what I'm talking about. Take that, Hydraler. Tentabat. Whoa, that's cool. Uh oh. He cannot touch crappy on. Rowlion? Oh my god, that's so overpowered. Holy shit. How do I fight that? Uh, is that ground steel or ground water? I hope it's water. Uh oh. Oh my god. He's setting up. Ooh. Okay. Oh my god, he's missed. We got him. Darker? Oh. Divine beast looking ass. Oh no. Wait, this is scary. How many buffs does he have? He's got two of the same buff. <laughs> What is this, dude? Does he have any attacks? <laughs> uh, I, he's still going. When I'm done setting up, my power will be immense. 
You have no idea what I am preparing for you, crappy on. Just a few more turns of setting up, and then you will die. And all of your members will die. Just give me another three turns to set up. One more turn, and I will have all of the special defense necessary to sweep you and your team. You better not hit me, though. Damn it. Well. I, I wish I knew what his last move was. Oh, we gotta face our rival now. Yeah, Professor Oak, I just beat the fourth member of the Elite Four, which means I'm up against the champion now. And you might be talking to the new champion of Pokemon in the next five minutes. What do you say to that, huh? Well, 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 that's quite ambitious of you, isn't it? But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Regardless, I'm always happy to help a trainer in need. What can I do for you? Perhaps you have some questions about Pokemon fusions? Or maybe you want to know more about the champion you'll be facing. Yeah, tell me about the champion I'm going to be facing. Isn't it your grandson, Gary? Yes, Gary. He's certainly a skilled trainer, but don't underestimate him just because he's my grandson. He's worked hard to get where he is, and he's not easy to beat. Be prepared for anything when you face him. He's got a diverse roster of powerful Pokemon, and he's not afraid to use them to his advantage. Don't let his confidence get to you either. He can be a bit arrogant at times, which can lead to his downfall. Just focus on your own strengths and tactics, and you'll have a fighting chance. <laughs> what was at the end? Hmm. Professor Oak, where do you think he got his arrogance from? Was it from his upbringing? Maybe a certain parental or even grandfatherly role in his life? Well, I won't deny that Gary's upbringing had an impact on his confidence. He's been surrounded by strong trainers and Pokemon his entire life, so it's natural that he would develop a certain level of pride in his abilities, but I also think it's just his personality. Gary has always been a bit of a show-off, and he's competitive to a fault. He wants to be the best, and he's not afraid to let everyone know it. While it can be annoying at times, I do admire his drive and determination. It's what makes him a formidable opponent. If I beat Gary, does that mean I can be your grandson? Ha ha ha, I'm afraid not, my dear trainer. Becoming my grandson requires more than just defeating Gary in battle. It requires a certain level of respect and admiration for the Pokemon world. As what? well as a willingness to learn and grow as a trainer. But who knows? Perhaps you can become a powerful trainer in your own right and earn my respect and admiration. Just keep pushing yourself and never give up. And you might just surprise yourself with what you can accomplish. So you're telling me there's a chance that one day I might earn your respect well enough that I could be your grandson. Hypothetically speaking, if you were to become a great Pokemon trainer and contribute positively to the world of Pokemon, then yes, 
It's possible that you could earn my respect and admiration, and who knows what may come of that in the future. But let's focus on the present first, shall we? You've got a challenging battle with Gary ahead of you. Let's make sure you're prepared for whatever he throws your way. It's whispering. This is a secret. Okay, Professor Oak, I'll keep this secret between you and me. First, I'll beat up your real grandson, and then I'll earn your respect, and one day, You'll call me grandson too. Haha. <laughs> ha. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You've got a tough battle with Gary coming up, and it won't be easy. But I like your determination. Keep that same energy and focus on becoming the best trainer you can be. And who knows, maybe one day you'll earn my respect and admiration too. Best of luck on your journey, young trainer. Thanks, Grandpa. I mean, Professor. <laughs> okay, but Grand Toise. Uh, this is what, fairy water? Ooh. Okay. I see what you're doing there. Setting up. Ooh, he predicted it. No way. No way, dude. I can get my health back from this. Come on. <sighs> Hang in there! We got him. No! At least we're, bur we're burning through all the, uh, the stores. Oh my god, how many does he have? He's like, wait a minute. Maybe I should swap. What is that? Is that Weezing and... Arbok? Arzing? Easy. I missed. After all that, I missed? Okay, thank God. Okay, we're back in it. Last Lastizard. Whoa, fuck, it's firing steam. That's actually really cool. It's missing though, which is good. Oh boy. Yeah, he's got leftovers. Oh. The first mill tank we've seen. And it's not even horny. Chat is in shambles. Someone do something. <laughs> oh, we are crappy on is was our secret carry this whole time, dude. Uh, you know what, let's, let's give someone else a try. 
about... Hair is sharp. Hair sharp's like, hey guys at home, I know you're a fan. Check this out. I call this move close combat. Ah! Holy shit! He's a hero. Uh, didn't go so hot though. He's gonna miss. He's gonna miss! I just realized I went up against a fire type. <laughs> he could have just one shot me. Well, I guess it's come to this then. Go, Metagar! Everyone's getting a piece of this. Lucanine. Holy furry. What in the furry? Um. It's a centaur. Right, I think Psychic's actually the best. Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's go, Metagar. Last one. Who's it gonna be? Mr. Bomb! No! <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. Gah. I can't hit him. He's too powerful. Oh, no, he really... He, he really wasn't. <laughs> he didn't do anything. And just kept bonking him on the head till he stopped moving. Guess what, Professor? I just beat your grandson. Are you proud of me? Does that mean I can finally call you grandfather? <gasps> it's him! He's gonna say that right now! Congratulations on your victory. While I'm impressed, winning a single battle hardly entitles you to call me grandfather. Maybe try defeating him a few more times and then we'll talk about it. Keep up the good work, trainer. Okay, I don't wanna... I don't wanna get this to... Let me try this again. Professor Oak, I just beat your grandson for the championship of the Pokemon League. I have already beaten him many, many times. I beat him like five times. And you promised me, after I beat him at the very end, then you would consider calling me your grandson. Well, I've done it. And now I'm the Pokemon League champion. Move the goalpost. Look, he's even saying how much I've grown up since he's he, he I left uh, Palatown. My sincerest congratulations to you, champion. Indeed, your impressive track record speaks for itself. While I'm not sure I recall making such an agreement about calling you my grandson, I'm certainly proud of your accomplishments. You've shown impressive skill and dedication, and I'm sure that you'll continue to make great strides in your journey as a Pokemon trainer. Keep up the good work. Professor Oak, as my one wish of being Pokemon champion, I wish for you to call me grandson. Asterisk, 
makes a wish asterisk. While I appreciate your enthusiasm, I'm afraid it's not quite that simple. Titles are earned through hard work and dedication, not wishful thinking. Therefore, if you want to be recognized as my grandson, you must continue to demonstrate your skill and passion for Pokemon. But don't worry. I'm sure with your current experience and drive, you'll achieve great things in the future. I, but I've already achieved great things. I'm literally the champion of the Pokemon League. And my Pokemon are being registered in the Hall of Fame. What else do I need to do, Professor Oak? I've done everything you've asked and more. Please? I apologize if I've given you the wrong impression. The title of grandson is not something that I can simply grant to anyone, no matter how many achievements they may have earned. It's a familial term that reflects a deep sense of mutual respect and affection. While I'm certainly proud of your accomplishments as a trainer, it's important to remember that titles and accolades are not the most important things in life. What truly matters is the journey itself, the relationships you build along the way, and the fulfillment you find in pursuing your passion. So keep striving to be the best you can be, and I have no doubt that you'll find success and happiness in everything you do. Close this video call. Anyway, my blue team and Crapion won. Even though I still don't have a grandfather. Frogman! This mod is amazing. This was fantastic. Very fun. There's apparently a whole post-game thing where there's a whole bunch more you can do, but... For now, I am proud of where we got. Okay, Professor Oak, now that I'm Pokemon Champion, I'm gonna go to sleep. Would you tell me one more Pokemon Fusion bedtime story before I leave? And just pretend you're my grandfather? I shouldn't have pushed that. I shouldn't have pushed that. He's gonna say no. Certainly. There once was a powerful Pokemon called Charizard, who was known for its awesome fire-breathing powers. One day, a clever trainer put their Charizard and a powerful water-type Pokemon called Blastoise together, and the resulting fusion was a fearsome beast known as Charblastoise. This hybrid was both agile and powerful, able to navigate both land and sea with ease while commanding both flame and water. Its signature move was a devastating technique called Hydro Blast Flamethrower, which combined both water and fire type moves into one deadly attack. It was said that Charblastois was nearly invincible in battle, but also had a gentle nature when befriended by a skilled trainer. The end. Okay, so this thing existed, the end. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened with it, but it just, it was a thing that existed at one point. Um, ah, that's just what I needed. Now, I'll be able to drift away to dreamland. Thanks, Professor. For everything. Grandfather.
You're welcome, but I'm not your grandfather. No! A renowned Pokemon researcher. However, I'll take that as a compliment. If you need any help with Pokemon fusions, don't hesitate to ask. Have a good night's rest, trainer. Well, there you have it. Bad ending. <laughs> we have to let him go. I know. We have to let him go. We have to move on. Thank you guys for watching and experiencing this journey of Pokemon Infinite Fusion and ethically responsible uh, usage of AI. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. Um, tomorrow, if you like this show, my buddy Charborg and I are going to be playing Cursed Halo with an AI Cortana, which is uh, going to be amazing. I got to say, we've been testing it out. I think you guys are going to love it. So that is going to be tomorrow, I think around 5 p.m. PST. I'm going to check with Charborg and make sure everything is good to go. But um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope I'll see you there. So that'll be that. Um, that'll do her. I'm going to uh, send you guys away now. Far, far away. Uh, let's see. I'm going to let's let's raid Chibidoki. I've never raided Chibidoki before. We'll see. We'll see what they're up to. Raid message. Um, let's see. Chibidoki is the VTuber I played um, Barnyard with. We did that that cow game. Um, uh, Boomer raid. Yeah. Milk raid. I don't know how that'll go over. But why not? All right. Have a good night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow for some Halo. Um, it'll be great. All right. Take it easy. Bye-bye.